Hello, beautiful people. How are you doing today? Uh, don't panic about the application you're seeing on the screen. This is not our app. I just have this over here because I'm building this and I have some interesting features that I think that probably we would want to implement on our app. I don't know if you guys want. Uh, but if you know, uh, for now, the images of our application are static. So you cannot do this. You cannot scroll over the images just like that. Or let me say if I click over here. Yes, I think that doing this on our application would be something very interesting. I don't know what you guys think. Maybe it's not quite necessary. But I just wanted to show you guys so we can discuss about that in the comment section. Uh, with that being said, let's go back to our application now. Oh, this is not the one. I'm sorry guys, I usually have a lot of apps here. So sometimes I just open the wrong ones, but this is our application. Okay, just to start everything quite, you know what, matter of fact, let me close this one. Yes, I want to terminate. Now let's run our app. The goal for today uh, is to increment the similar product section, which is going to be something very easy. You can do it in 30 seconds. And after that, we'll want to start working on the user profile. So we are really, 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 really heading to the final step. So final stages of our application. Uh, today, we'll want to add similar products down here. And what else? Uh, I want to start working on our profile so that when you click over here, you can just, uh, matter of fact, let me open, as I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm developing this app. Like I have a version in which I work with, I test some, some stuff out and then this tutorial, this shop app toot is for the purpose of the tutorial. So let me open uh, the application that I use for testing the stuff and let us see what are we going to do today. New window because I don't want to terminate this. Um, let me try to let select iPhone X and we will run this. Okay, so I'm opening I'm opening the other app so that we can see where are we going with this stuff. Um, with that being said, while well, it's oh, okay, it was quick. Okay. We will want to add some stuff here. Let me rerun this. Not quite happy with the results. Oops. This is the wrong app. Okay, I'm sorry for this process. I'm opening this and closing every time. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. Give you a small glimpse of where we're we going with all of this stuff. Okay. So we do have a small problem. Today we're going to do this stuff here. Add some similar products. And as you can see now, because the, the products are hard coded, you just 
I just give the I just gave the same products here the same products we have on our home page I just repeated them here but since we will work with the backhand and the database we'll try to find some logic to apply for the products that are going to show over here all right okay let us go back to our shop app now uh, I wanted to show you the user profile but somehow I'm facing some problems with this but no problem we'll just code that stuff out uh, let me try to populate here I guess it's going to be useful uh, for now we'll have to put this on full screen and be serious on the work uh, the first stuff I want to do is to open up okay main page is already here and we have the products here Okay, we need to populate this stuff here. And how are we going to do that? Uh, for now, let me open the PubSpec file, okay? And let me see how many images do we have here. We do have a lot of images, so I guess it would be a good idea to populate this a little bit more. Okay, I'll just repeat this stuff like for some. To four times we have six images I guess it's going to be good enough and let me go to the pub spec file okay uh, I hope you did import these files here for the images and all of that good stuff uh, I don't want to rewrite that and I guess I have notes here uh, what I'm doing here guys is basically <clears throat> importing these images which are present in the image folder the asset images to our pub spec file I already told you how to do this and I know that if you made it this far you know how to do this I'm just copying and pasting to save to spare some time because I don't really want to be doing this again and has no this is not rocket science something very easy to do and to implement that's why uh, let me do package get okay so far so good and about these images the path of the images you can see that the, here are the if you open up products here we have the images so we're just uh, importing these images here okay uh, okay let me control save didn't ask me nothing what if I open up view as I imagine it didn't okay let us hope everything goes right and everything did go right sometimes we have problems importing this because of the indenting or indentation I don't know how I'm supposed to call it but this file here is very sensitive even the spaces you provide must be aligned and if the spaces are out of line or are not well organized the file is not going to work 
okay so as I told you I did import some images so now let us just change then let's just change this stuff and cuz I am lazy as I told you I don't want to write that stuff again I will do this I'll copy this path here and I'll come to the products I will paste you see uh, I'll copy this stuff here I will paste it over here Okay, I guess that now we are done with this importing images. With this importing process, I'll just control save this. I have problem with this image here. If it's white, probably it's Probably I'm using a name which is not valid. So I'll try to provide another image. Let me try Blazer too. When the image doesn't come, probably the image doesn't exist on the image file. That's why. Okay, so I have this stuff here looking nicer. What are we going to do now is fairly simple. I'm going to, you know what, let's go back to this way because it, this is the best way of organizing this stuff uh, I wanted to add the similar images there but first off let us try to change I'm not really liking this anymore so let let us try to change this UI doing something like this how can we change? I'll just start looking and here we have go to the grid tile and I want to change the footer. Okay. For now I have a list tile. What if I just delete all of these and instead I'll place here new uh, someone asked me in the comment section why I still using new if it's deprecated like you don't need to use uh, it's simple most of the time the IDE helps me with auto completion when I use new you don't need to use it but it comes in handy that's why I still use it but you don't need to use it you can just write row, right? So I'll just provide here children. And I will give uh, expanded widget. 
and inside of this I'm going to give child new text you see let me try to show you if is it possible okay it's quite the same thing you don't need to use it uh, new text and here I'm going to give widget oops 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 not widget I'm going to give product name and outside of this I'm going to give text I see what's the problem I just gave text and now I have to write the parentheses for myself while when I just do new T it gives me everything right uh, new text then <clears throat> sorry in here I'm going to write product price but I will need to put this inside of strings why because I want to put the dollar sign now I can write product price style text style just to change the color I'll give you a colors dot red let me try to run this and see what happens do you see what's the difference now it's kind of I like it more like this I'll just provide the white here and here I can probably change the font so style I'll give here text text style and I'm uh, going to give font weight font weight I need it to be bold and uh, what else can we do I want to change the size as well font size um, let, let us give a 16.0 if I control save this okay and for the price I want to give it a font bold as well So font weight is going to be font dot bold okay uh, so we did have our UI modification here and I really guess it's it's looking better now now I have a small problem Hmm. I probably changed something I shouldn't have but that's not a big deal at all we can still fix this uh, okay the video is already way 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 too long whatever it's happening I'll make sure we're going to fix that on our next video okay okay but for now we have this UI probably it's just a small thing I have to modify to put things back to normal but because I don't want to make a very long video and still fix this problem for the next update I will fix this black screen problem and I will provide the similar product section down here okay don't don't, don't worry about this uh, thank you for watching guys. I really hope you did enjoy the video and Smash that like button give the comments. Don't worry about the black screen for the next video We're going to have this thing solved and we're going to provide the similar uh, product section uh, We ended up doing something else for this video, but 
the problem is I wasn't really enjoying the UI no more so I think that now it looks better and if you think differently you feel free to tell me but I guess that this is sim this is simple and it's better okay okay so see you on the next one guys don't forget to leave that like don't forget to comment anything thank you for the support bye bye hello lovely and beautiful people I'm back again I'm back again we're trying to waste no time and something tells me that today's video is going to be kind of long uh, because I want to I want to start developing the shopping cart page as well and I didn't quite do this on the other app to test it so I will try to do it live to speed up the process but uh, for our on our last video we had an error oops I guess I fixed it wait let me try to create the error again it was something like yeah it was something like this so this is where we left off actually on a blank screen so the goal for today is to fix this first and uh, add the similar products and start developing the shopping cart section uh, let's do it before we start with that stuff uh, still here on our UI there's something I would like to change and let's go to the image carousel as you know to open a, a, a specific widget just click control and then click on it and it will go to that particular okay I want to change this so I will just put here dot bg color and give it colors dot transparent control save it Tada. and I guess that now it looks somehow better okay nothing too big nothing too fancy but still makes a different I guess um now let us solve this problem the first problem i encountered when i started developing for flutter is it was kind of scary and difficult for me to understand the errors because when you get an error you get something like this let me open this oops yeah you get something like this and ladies and gentlemen this is scary you don't even know how or where to start but you just have to go to the beginning because usually the error is written on the first three lines or so and let us read what's happening exception caught by scheduler blah 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 the following assertion was strong during the scheduler callback okay there are multiple heroes that share the same tag. I don't really know what happened, but it's telling me that this hero widget has a tag. And usually a tag is like an ID to identify a specific widget. And it's telling me that it's finding different heroes with this same tag. I don't know how. I don't know why. But to fix this problem, just give a different tag here. And what I did was just, I just created a text widget. And provide the tag of hero one you can do anything here you can write anything you want hero two hero seven even if you just write a it's up to you let's run the application again and it's back on business everything working perfectly fine um we have that stuff out now what are we going to do um another thing i would like to do here is to give the ability now to go back to the main page you have to click this arrow i would like to give the user the ability of just clicking here and loading the main page just clicking the name of the app here so how are we going to do that stuff uh we will do something like product details is what you have to open 
and go to the top and here you have this a bar title this is what we want to change right so to make things easy just click that lamp new widget we are going to give this inkwell widget and we're going to provide on tab what do we want you to do on tab we want you to load the main page uh, to make that possible first we have to import here import package shop act main.dart is it defined here let me open just to make sure that the home page is defined here in the main yes it is uh we have this here now how are we going to call that that is by navigator and instead of writing off context then push you can just this is a small shortcut just write push then here will provide the route which is going to be material page route builder you're going to provide the function which checks the context as the argument and returns and returns what new home page then close it here and we're good to go run the app again click on anything then click over here and we're back simple but quite interesting uh, another thing I would like us to do now here let us do a small modification which is coming over here and for the remove this icon control save it done I guess it looks better like this we don't need to have the shopping cart over here because we have it here okay uh, what else can we do the categories I don't think we really need to repeat them because we already have them here so the user can pick a category from here so I'll just come over here and I will not quite remove but I will change this where is our drawer where is our drawer oh on the main okay you open main then we're going to okay here you have it so zoom a little bit I'll change this to shopping cart and I will put shopping cart here good then we could do something like colors just to change the color of the icons colors dot red let me copy this stuff over here copy it okay come to the favorite paste it come here paste it and repeat the process what are we doing is basically changing the colors of these icons Control save this stuff done and down here we don't really need to 
have these colors like this so I'll just clean up the stuff good oh uh, now let's add the similar product section down here <clears throat> how are we going to do this is very simple we are going to open the product session we will create a class down here it's going to be a stateful because most of the time probably we will need to change the state of this widget then I'm going to write similar products since the working of the similar products and the working of the products are quite the same we don't really want to write this over again so I'm just going to products.dart I'm going to click on this stuff here and we copy this let's go back to the mm, I guess I over it okay open up products uh, first copy the list of products uh, and when we implement the backend of these we're going to get this stuff automatically but since we're not on that stage yet just be patient oh no i guess i did the right thing that time oops okay we're going to copy the content of the product section you come to the similar products and just like magic you paste the stuff we can just decrease the number of content here to make it different from the main page right yeah yep okay now we don't have the single product class or widget as you want to call it but I'll just come here copy this stuff we have this stuff copied down down we paste this stuff And I guess we are good to go. But to avoid problems in the future having this widget with same name, I'll write here similar single product just to have a difference so that we don't run into issues in the future. And I'll paste this stuff here. I really hope you guys are understanding what's happening here. We're just copying and pasting basically the content of the the main page because the structure is the same and we are pasting here. Okay, nothing too fancy, nothing too special. Um so what now? Similar products is what we want. So you can just write here similar product section and I'll give new container. Okay, I may just stop overusing the new. I'll just give container then height 360 it's good 
and then I'm going to give child similar product I'll run the app again and see if we have issues or not and it seems like we don't but still we may need to do some stuff here like for example I adding a divider would be nice adding a small divider wouldn't hard oops then we can add the small text as well new text and for the text we're going to give oh what is it Similar products is fine. We may just need to just to make things nice, add a small padding. So it's done, guys. <clears throat> We have here the similar products and all of that good stuff. Okay. Uh, here we may need to test out the different values for the container height. But this is really just up to you. I guess it's good. Okay. So, uh, I really wanted to start developing this on this particular video, but I think it's going to be very lengthy. So what are we going to do is leave this stuff here for now and the next one which is going to be very soon is going to be quicker than this is it okay i'm just making sure everything is working fine and uh now check the difference of why why would would we want to make this take us to the main page because sometimes i can just come here then open a similar product it's going to open a different page then open a similar product again and if i just click to go back i will go back here then go back here and sometimes we don't want to do this stuff we want to go to the main page directly so even if i come here then i come here then i come here just when I want to go straight to the main page, I just click here and it's done. Okay. I really hope you did enjoy this video, guys. Uh, I'll be cooking. Cook by cooking, I mean coding or preparing the next video. Regarding the, the card, shopping cart page. And soon, 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 very soon we will be done with the UI. It's taking us a while, so we want to finish this stuff to go back to the, to go to the good stuff, the back end of this. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, like. If you did enjoy the video, leave a comment. Uh, you can criticize uh, anything. Just thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. I hopefully see you on the next one. Bye bye. Oops, bye. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Uh, today finally we are going to work with this section okay so I don't have a lot to talk about today before the video so let's get straight to the business okay I'm gonna need to
put this on full screen now. I think we may, oops, where are you? Okay. I may need to go straight to the video for now. And uh, first off, what are we going to do here is we'll need to create a page called cards. Okay. So let's go to pages. For now, we only have the product detail on our pages. Okay, we'll do new Dart file. Then we're going to do to give this cart for the shopping cart, right? Okay. Afterwards, I will add this file to Git. Um. Now, let us, since we have this, I guess we can go back to the view I like, which is this. Mm, import. Don't worry about the colors of the file. This just means I didn't upload this to the Git repository. And I will do that as soon as possible. Now we're going to import what? I hope you guys know that we first have to import the flutter material dot dart. Uh, now, what we're going to do is to create a stateful widget. And we're going to call this cart or shopping cart as you want, but I'll just give it cart. What is this widget going to return? Let's go back to, it's going to return a scaffold. Okay. And uh, let's go here to the product details because I want to copy something. And now, you know, let's go to the main. I want to copy the app bar. You don't need to copy, you can write this again, but since you're going to be doing this over and over and over again, I just want to spare some time, so I'll just copy the app bar settings, if I may define them like that. And I will paste this good stuff. This down here, we can just delete, it's not required. And for the title, I'm going to give cart or shopping cart, depends on you. And for this page, for now, it's all. We need to call the page now. And I think that it's easy for you guys now to do that. Shopping cart, just come over here, write navigator dot push context, okay, and the before this, I'm forgetting, we need to import the file, import package dot pages, and inside of the pages, we're going to import the cart dot dart, so now you can use it, okay, uh, route, we're going to give material page route, function which takes the context has an attribute and returns new card okay you close this stuff here is it everything okay card with the capital C that was the problem so what to do now 
I'll re rerun the app. I don't want to control save it. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, let's try. And here you have it. Okay. I guess it's okay. Uh, now, we want to be able to call that from here as well. It's simple. Just come to the sh I would just copy and paste, but okay. I want to give you guys chance to practice and remember how is it done. So, we can come here and write navigator.push context okay no problem and here I'm going to give material page route and we're going to call a function which take the context as the attribute and returns new cart needs to be capital Okay, you can control save this, no issue whatsoever, and you can as well call it from here. Okay, so what 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 else? Now we will do we'll start working with this stuff here. Let's open this up. We need to zoom in a bit. app bar here and we will go down here and going to give oops oops bottom navigation bar is what we want one of the properties of this scaffold and for the bottom navigation bar we will give new container I'm going to give the color of the container to colors colors dot white and as a child of the container I'm going to give in a row okay and children over the row then down here for the children first let's create the expanded widget for the child, I will give list tile, of course. Okay, list tile. And for the title of the list tile, we are going to give new text widget. Inside of the text widget, we are going to write the total amount. I'm facing a problem. Oh, I misspelled this text. Okay, and then we're going to provide the subtitle property. And for the subtitle, we're going to give new text. I'm so sorry for the new, it's just a habit. You don't need to write it, and just putting a value as a placeholder here and the value is two thirty dollars um then what are we going to do is create another expanded widget i'm going to create a child new material button on press for now we'll give just an empty function Oops. And then down here, we are going to provide the child of this new text checkout. 
And another property of the material button is the color. I'm going to give colors dot red. And for the text, I'm going to give style text style color colors dot white. Okay. Here we have it. So down here at the very bottom of of the page we'll have a total on the left side, then we'll have the amount, then the checkout button, uh, which is going to take you to the payment section afterwards. Uh now we need to work with the body of this. But I guess that this video was already long enough, so I will try to stop. I will not try. I will just stop here, and for the next video, we will work with the content of the card page. As always, thank you for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, leave your like, leave your comment, uh, criticize, support anything share and yeah just anything just let me know down below and hopefully we we'll see each other on the next one bye bye hello beautiful people before I even started the tutorial today I would like to thank every one of you guys uh, because now we have we are a thousand, we are a family of thousand members. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, and I'm very happy to know that you guys like the content of I'm, I'm publishing. Uh, you guys are very supportive. And you give me motivation, as always I say, to keep on going and putting out so many good videos for you guys. Unfortunately, sometimes I'm kind of inconsistent, but... Uh, I try my best to not let you guys wait for very long and uh, I hope we will find a way to adjust a small announcement uh, we will start I will start publishing uh, different kind of videos along with this tutorial our e-commerce apps is not going to stop don't worry about that but since we've been for the past two or four months I've been working only on this and publishing videos only on on this and it's kind of repetitive so I will start new playlists for shorter applications and I'm planning on starting a playlist called build my app so you guys can suggest the type of app you would like me to build for you uh, preference has to be something small not something very complex like this something like um, a reminder alarm uh, app and this kind of this kind of stuff okay uh and now i'm working on a app using sq sql light uh, for money management and financial management so you can record your expenses and this kind of stuff i guess this app app is short and i can make it in two videos or so and i'll publish that one along with this one will not will not stop with the e-commerce app but i'm just trying to diversify the content so you can learn uh, di different kind of stuff okay okay enough of the talking i did talk a lot but thank you thank you again thank you again let's go to the video now uh, so what's happening here on our last video we were to work on this card okay what I usually do is that I develop this app uh, then I do the video again I just develop offline to test if everything is working fine the dimensions and this kind of stuff but since I'm trying to speed up the process uh, for a couple videos I will just do it live if I may call it like that, but we'll be developing this together. But but somehow it's a way for you guys to know how I usually think when I'm developing the apps or what's the what are the steps for you to take the way of thinking. Okay, uh, let's do it. Uh, here we have this. 
what we want is to build I will put maybe two items here on our card just to test this stuff and what are, what are the steps for us to follow uh, first because we want to organize our app the best way possible I'll come here to the pages and I'll create a page called card I guess I already have that we have it here okay so um, what is going to happen guys here I will this video is going to be long I don't know how long is it going to take but it's going to be long um, I'll come to the components not the pages okay then we will create a component called card products okay <clears throat> I'm sorry card products and we'll then use this component inside of our card page okay so with that being said we will do this now zoom in just a little bit and we'll create here import package flatter material dot dart okay here I'm going to use stateful widget then we're going to call this card products okay so this is the component and we are going to call this component from the card page here so we're going to import the component okay let me zoom and just to make this easy to find out in case of problems I'll write my import then I will write here import package not pages but yes components card products okay okay so what are we going to do now is start working on this component but way before we do that stuff we can just put here our body tag and then I'm going to give new container no 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 we'll, we'll not need to use the container I can just give here new card product okay this is what are we doing here so just to make sure that this is working properly we will open this file and I can just write child new text write anything control save this we open up our app and you have it here so it means it's working okay I guess that I can go 
I can make this smaller now and this small as well so we can see what's happening let me open up this page and we will start working okay let us think let us think together here we are going to display products uh, which were added to the cart since we're going to use JSON we, by implementing the implementing Firebase we use JSON we are going to build our app in a way that is going to be easier for us to implement this kind of stuff afterwards so I would need to have a list here but wait here instead of returning container we can return new list view builder mm -hmm. we need to use item count okay we can put three for now and then here we're going to use context then index what can we do now let us try to do you take return I'm sorry return you text okay <clears throat> so as you can see here now we have text 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 three times let me zoom and explain you what happened here I guess that this is big enough so guys here we have like we are providing a list view builder because we want the products to come here here and here and here and here and here and here just like a list view right so we'll need to use a list view builder to do this stuff automatically okay uh, we are going to use down here a variable list no oh, I can write products on the card this is a this is a variable okay but what what's happening here? I use I usually give lengthy names uh, because it's going to be it's kind of self-explanatory pro products on the card. So, uh, since I don't like to write a lot, I will just come here and copy the structure of this list, and we're going to add it on that. Come back here. Control V. Uh, let me delete. Maybe just leave two. Two elements here. I guess it's going to be good enough. How many are here? Three. I don't need three. I want two. Okay, so I have two elements here. So now we have the list. Uh, what else are we going to want to build? On our on our list of view on our list of elements we are going to need the name of the product of course picture of the product of course uh, old price we're not really going to need so 
we can delete here this key and this value gone we have the price of the product now then name a uh, picture price we'll need the size the color and the quantity do you remember the back from this screen here whatever you can pick size color quantity so we will work, work in such a way that before picking every single one of these components we cannot buy or add to the card okay um okay let us add here size don't worry afterwards we're going to pick all of these values from the database now we're just providing the structure size i'm going to give something like m then i'm going to give color color is going to be red then quantity one I have to put comma here okay so we have the basic structure over here and we are going to maybe copy this stuff yeah copy this stuff and paste it here okay just to differentiate this we are going to take red dress and or maybe we can take the shoes I'll copy all of these okay go back to our card and we'll change the blazer here for the heels and I'll write here shoes what is the price of the shoes And here we have 50 bucks I need to change these names and here we have 50 bucks for the shoes oops 50 color red size Seven. Um, I'm treating this as a string, but no problem. What else? Color red. Here I'm going to put black. Okay, for the list part is done. Now we are going to create stateless I'm going to call this single card product okay and for the single card product we're going to have some final variables one is going to be product name let me see if I cannot get some help from here.
copy come back to the card to spare some time paste I remove the old price then we need product size product color product quantity copy product size product color product quantity but just to differentiate this I will put cart in front of this to avoid any kind of possible problem that would come from the future we don't want to have problems in the future and we don't want to repeat the name of our class data attributes so okay now we're going to build a constructor here and to build a constructor or if you somehow don't know what a constructor is constructor is basically a function which is going to be automatically called since when you call the class and it's used to initialize the values of the data attributes of the class so we're going to put here these dot product name these dot okay we don't really the order doesn't really matter here product price this dot product picture the dot product quantity this dot product size okay here we have it now coming down here we are going to <clears throat> oh before we even do that stuff let us do instead of returning these over here we are going to return single product and for the card product name we are going to give products on the card oops index name <clears throat> so for the first index or the first time this is this is going to take the name of this variable and the second index okay here we don't need to write this hard coded I'll just need to write products on the card dot plan okay so the number of items in the list view are going to be the num equal to the number of items on the product card list okay uh, then card product color let me just copy this stuff to make our lives somehow easier dot color okay <clears throat> Q 
quantity what else size here <clears throat> I'm sorry uh, and then other than the size we have price here and picture okay we are going to pass all of these values for this class so so now let us start working here and we don't want to return a container but let's try to return a card widget oops oops card okay um uh, as a child of the card, we are going to return a list tile and for the title, just to test this stuff, we are going to give uh, you text then in here card product name. Okay, let us see. And chat on. Now, what are we going to do after this? For the subtitle, we're going to give new. Uh, I will. We may need to use a row here, or a column. Let us test how would it be using a Okay, we have something. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be centered though, but still, we have something. Uh, why am I using this column? Here, instead of a column, I'm going to use, inside of the column, I'm going to use a row. And for the row, I'm going to give, let me try to provide expanded, uh, child, uh, size, new text, size, And uh, maybe color. Mm -hmm. So here we have size and color. So for the size, I can try to give here just 
U padding or better new text product size control save to say uh, it's really way up there and we don't want this to be way up there so we may need to use a widget called padding let's try with this basic padding still so instead of this padding here insets dot from left right bottom for the left we can give okay we can give five five or oh, five point zero because we are dealing with double values so for the right I'm going to give twelve point zero and for the bottom we're going to give five oh see how this comes out and uh, not very good not how we expected so to deal with this situation we can do something like this let me get rid of this stuff and I'll write here new text um, size control save it to see here we have the size then we're going to add a widget padding okay so I will copy this and I will paste it down here and instead of having size here you're going to have correct seven okay so I'll comment this section is for this size of the product then I can just copy this and repeat but or else new padding const edge oops so from the left we can give this 20 then just give eight here eight here and eight here okay let us give a child for this widget child we can just copy this stuff here and paste it here and we can reduce here for C to 6 okay or maybe 4 and here instead of 
give color okay and what else can we do we can copy this come here paste it and just put cart product color then we know that the product color is so for to be for it to be easy to differentiate we could of course try to okay this set let me just come over here and comment this section is for okay okay uh, what else now now we can do we can edit the we can add some style here text style try just to differentiate color colors dot red how about that and we can give the same oops oops and we can provide the same style down here okay now we have this done but do not forget that we are inside of a column and now we may be wondering why did I use a column but this is why um, this section is the product price new text then I'll put here dollar sign no uh, forward slash dollar sign dollar sign again card uh, price okay let's see uh, not quite what we want to have so how can we work with this let me try to add a new container um, then we have alignment alignment dot okay top uh, top what top what top left how about that and then we can give child new text and we're going to put here again the forward slash dollar sign dollar sign again the price and let us see Tada! this is what I wanted to have the price aligned over here so I just use a container and then I put this kind of stuff now uh, what are we going to do is simply 
to reduce you can change the, the the padding of the size if you want to put four you can put four if you want to put something like two or zero you are free to do that so all of these will be aligned okay uh, what can we do now is add some style to this uh, style text style then I'm going to add color 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 okay you can put some size font size and let me try 16.0 control save this I guess the 16 is big enough if you you can play around with these values no problem I have 17 here and you can also do we can also do font weight font weight dot bold okay and you can change the color as well uh, let us see how would that come out color colors dot red okay I guess it's good enough uh, now what are we going to do we are going to put something over don't forget that here we are inside of a list view and all of this is the subtitle section this column is present on the subtitle section but we can do here leading oops and we're going to put new image dot assets then we're going to picture let me just see how it is going to come out okay why is it like this we have to give some constraints of course so let's try to put here width of 100 and height of 100 now you can see we have everything in here and even if you think that this is big we can put even smaller value like 80 and 80 and I think that 80 is perfect so we can try to do double dot infinity and that was not a good idea I'm going to leave this at 80 80 I think is big enough so uh, we are almost done with this the last thing we we'll want to do here is to come where are we going to go we have the leading here let me comment this stuff out so uh, leading section here then I'll comment this stuff here title section done and here oops subtitle section done okay 
other than that, we may need to do something else. Where are we going to do that? Am I inside of the... Okay, not here. List tile. This is a column. Mm. What do I want? What do I want to do here? Is it is it good? Is it done? Uh, okay guys, we are starting to I guess that this is almost done for our cart. We may need to do a sp like small adjustments for the um, the next videos, but I guess that for now is good enough. I don't even know how long this video is. Uh, but we can do okay. I was looking for this trailing lettuce lettuce uh, for example I was sometimes you forget the, the names of the property of a widget you just click command and click on the widget so you can come here and see how this kind of how what are the definitions of the widget and I was looking for this property called trailing and we can just come here almost I'm not going to give trailing. Uh, for the trailing, you're going to give what is it going to be? New column or children new icon button is what I want. Icon icon start I need arrow arrow up icon like this and we'll copy this down here I'll put oops I guess I need to put the comma here We'll put arrow drop down okay let me run this and see I believe you can start telling what am I trying to do here let me test if this is going to work you text uh, one for example so this is going to be the item quantity instead of text I'm going to put card product quantity here okay so now I'm starting to think that maybe this widget was supposed to be a stateful widget because we're planning on changing the state of this but okay let me see if I can implement something here Okay, down to the class, we will, I will try to create a function 
uh, void the name of the function will be add quantity or when this method is called card quantity we, we were supposed to pass the reference of the object calling <coughs> the function but okay I'm just testing is equal to plus one okay we will work with this afterwards we'll find a way of increasing the values here and by increasing these values this the total amount is also supposed to increase uh, by clicking this is supposed to open up a checkout page we don't have to work on that now but the card shopping list the, the, the card page is completely done for now and uh, <clears throat> I really know that this video is very very lengthy but I hope it was worth we can do this as well oops 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 let me rerun the app Okay, type int is in a substring of a string. Let us check what the problem is. Oh, 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 I know, I know what the problem was. The problem is down here, quantity. This is not... an integer this is not a string is what I meant so we have to put this inside quotation marks and if you run the app the problem is solved let's try to double down on this run the app and see what happens as you see if we increment the elements of this this will so increment as well it's going to be very handy and easy for us to implement our backhand because of the structure we are following here guys if you made it this far I'm very proud of you and leave in the comment section just telling me you made it this far you saw the video until the end thank you very much for the support for the love don't forget to hit that like don't forget to leave a comment suggestions everything you would like to say you're free to say it so with that being said guys see you on the next one take care bye bye how are you doing well, first of all, I want to say that I'm very sorry uh, for taking too long to upload new videos. And uh, the problem is I've been busy trying to... I've been working with uh, other projects offline and I really don't have much time to record videos for you guys. I'm sorry for that. I'll try my best to bring you some good content. Um, we start today's video with a bad news uh, that was actually one of the motive one of the reasons um, that made me take so long I faced the problem with my computer and I had to format my computer so I lost all the information I have uh, this project I went ahead and, uh, and downloaded it from the, my github repo but it is incomplete the click 
to open new pages doesn't work so now i'm just going to ask you guys for a favor if one of you guys have the project complete meaning with the clicking clicking of the pictures if it does work and um, card page please share with me the link if you have it on github even better so please do it and uh, you're going to be helping me helping you because uh, i don't really feel like doing everything all over so i'll be uh, waiting for you guys to give me the code uh today's video is one of the most anticipated and asked for videos today we're going to start working on our backhand hey okay uh but for today we'll just set up the fire base for the app and uh probably for the next video i'm going to we are going to implement the google sign in and uh before we start working with the project with the with the product uh at the beginning i thought of using a real-time database but i guess that now i'm going to go with firestore i'm not quite sure okay but even before that even before we get into that there's something i would like to do the structure of this app is somehow uh wrong if i may yes it's somehow wrong giving this uh height like uh, hard coded is not a good practice and since the height of the screen device changes from device to device we may face some problems in the future doing this like that so let us try to solve this problem okay mm, uh, let me try to do something like this what if we comment over here and see how good is that mm. i was thinking on uh well implementing the categories on a different screen not here but let's comment this stuff out and see how it comes off okay i didn't really like this so I guess we're going to go back to the old design. Okay, but the thing we want to do here is the following. Uh, here, instead of a list view, let us give a column. Okay. And if we run this, we're probably going to run into problems, I guess. let us try okay we have problem here and uh, how can we fix this if I remove this hide more problems sure and uh, here we can do something very interesting which is trying to erase this here and here and uh, here and we are going to wrap the products inside the new widget and we're going to call this flexible and let us see how things will come off uh here we have this it seems like nothing changed really but it did uh because now let us add more products to this and we will see what happens um if i open up here we can just for now we just need to oops we 
we're just going to copy this and we're going to duplicate some times to see how things go okay let me try to rerun the app okay uh, it may look like it doesn't make much of a difference but actually it does because this thing here is going to be adjusted according to the screen but the advent the disadvantage of this approach is that you cannot scroll here anymore so um to make things somehow smooth for us or smoother we must have to add some padding to this let me add a padding of four to the single products let us rerun the app okay we do have some reasonable spacing over there but because of this new approach I'm going to need to at least for this page we may need to uh, let's comment here on the image carousel and uh, let us see how is the app going to look okay I like it So it's kind of a trade-off. We don't get to scroll over the complete screen like we used to do. But now this is going to be adjusted according to the device's screen. We, 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 we don't have to give this thing hard-coded. It's going to be flexible. Okay. So, um... Uh, what else can we do here maybe now we would uh, it would be nice to reduce the size of this and see how things go so let us go to the horizontal list just command and click on it is going to open where we want to oops okay let's let us go to the horizontal list and let us decrease the height here I think we may get some problems but okay let us see and again uh, we did I, I did not I did, I, did, I did not work with this offline, so everything I'm doing it live, and uh, yeah, we're just trying and implementing stuff right now. And I would want to open the category, <clears throat> and here, for the image height and stuff, uh, we would reduce this to 40 and 40 here container width 100 is too much let's give it 50 and let's rerun the app mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me comment out here and rerun the app. Okay, nothing 
changed apparently so we can do this like this and we run the app and now we have this okay okay I guess that these are all the categories we have and uh, if I comment this stuff out again and rerun the app we are going to have something like this okay well now you don't get to scroll the whole page you just get to scroll here so I think we are going to go with this approach and um, let us come over here here we have a very huge padding let me try to comment this stuff out and see how things are going to work uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm repeating I'm doing this live I didn't do it before that's why we are having so many uh, trials and stuff okay uh, okay now we can add a padding here of at least four and I'm going to come over here again and add a padding of at least four for the text and I'm, I'm, I'm working on the main page now and for the text let us do this we're going to uh, wrap this with a container and uh, we're going to provide alignment of the container and I'm going to give alignment dot um, center left okay and now uh, we're going to okay give it eight here and here we're going to do the same thing Mm, the container and again we're going to provide alignment alignment dot center left for the second one as well let us rerun the app and uh, we get something like this I like it so now uh, this is going to happen here the categories we don't get to change them and because this is so small we don't even get those text like t-shirts and stuff but I guess that the images are kind of self-explanatory and we can indeed still go still go with this this design okay with uh, with that done let us go to the I, I remind you again I only did this um, to make this adjustable for any kind of screen not just a particular type of device that's why I I, I, I rather go with this design uh, that is going to be because I want to create I want us to create an app that's going to be usable right not just something we're doing for the sake of doing and giving the container height like hard coding like 350 it's not a very good very good practice because as you know screen devices uh, sizes change and uh, the way you see it on your device if you run the app on a different screen size may not be as good okay so now <clears throat> I'm sorry let us go to the firebase part I I kind of got off topic here but I had to do this so how are we going to do this on uh, mm, open your favorite browser I'll just open Safari 
and it's not because it's my favorite browser it's just because it was here and I have Firebase already but I will I will teach you from the ground up so okay you go to Google or your favorite search engine you write fire Firebase you search and then you open up Firebase okay when you open Firebase you're going to have something like this you can read this to get informed is always good but we're going straight to the point just click on go to console and uh, it's going to process a bit my network connection is not very good today but hopefully things are going to work you just add create project and for the project name I am going to write e-commerce e-commerce and uh, about the rest you don't have to change much oh and this is not in English but okay you're going to have the same screen sorry this is in Portuguese because I speak Portuguese but okay you just have to come come and check here check here and then click next page I'm sorry I, I, I don't really want to restart the video and go and change the settings you just have to click and click okay and uh, your project will start processing and here we have it e-commerce so you're going to have a dashboard like this uh, don't mind the things written here this is not English but you're going to have the very same thing you just have to come here and click on this Android icon uh, for the first field they want you to give the name of the package and how do you how do you fill this first field again don't mind the language sorry for repeating but I know that probably some of you will be mad because of this no 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 this is not English but don't you just have to do what I'm doing uh, open up Android studio to get the name of the package right and if you come over here you just search for Android is the first first folder and in Android you just open up app and in app you just open up source and in source you just open up main and you have this Android manifest you click on it zoom a bit and uh, you have here the name of the package depending on the name you gave to your app this may be a different name this is just the name I have so you just do this and uh, you copy the name of the package you come back over here and uh, you paste here you're going to give a nickname for the app you don't need to fill this field but anyhow I will just give ecom and uh, here this is very important the, the SHA1 or SHA1 number it's optional but if you want to implement Google sign in and stuff you have to have this so we are going to have this um, so you can open up here you can write Android um, developer authentication I guess it's going to give us the number we want you click on the first link you're going to have mm -mm -mm. you know what in search you just search Android developer H a one fingerprint Okay, uh, you, you just search Android developer SHA fingerprint. 
you're going to be here on this page authenticating your client uh, then they teach you or they show you how to do this on Mac and Windows you just have to copy this to your terminals if you are on Windows you're going to do this if you're on Mac you're going to do this okay so um, first of all you just copy and uh, for Mac users you just open up your terminal for Windows you just open up command prompt okay and over here we're going to paste this you have to erase the first one if you are uh, oops oops let me let me paste it again mm -mm. let me open terminal again again for windows you just need to open up your command prompt and uh, copy the code and paste that's all you have to do uh, for Mac I faced some problems when I had both names so you just erase the first one you hit enter after that you after that you gain that window you come here you copy the second code the second line of code down here oops and uh, you paste it it's going to ask you for password you just Android is the password you just write Android and boom it's done now uh, when you get up this stuff you just have you see here the SHA1 or SHA1 number you come and copy this copy now go back to your browser you paste it here and click on here I was supposed to give ecom not just com register app or next okay now we have a quite a bit of a process uh, but going back to this window because I know that most of you are using Windows you just have to click on the Windows tab you're going to copy this the first line of code and then the second one you just write Android client authentication or Android SHA fingerprint you're going to come to this page and just copy this to your command prompt okay easy peasy uh, now first of all you have to download this google blah 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 google services dot json file you just click on download and it's going to start the download and now i just got reminded of something uh, make sure you have the google services up to date on your android studio if you don't none of this is going to work so you just come here over tools and SDK manager and uh, under SDK manager you click on SDK tools make sure you have your Google Play services here checked and if you don't you just have to download this Google Play services make sure you have that and another tip if you want to run this on a simulator you make sure your simulator has this um, triangle this sign this symbol representing the Google Play Store right because if it doesn't it's not going to work either so when you're downloading your simulator uh, for example when you're creating a virtual device you see you have many options here some of them don't have these and some do so if your simulator doesn't have this thing it's not going to work so download one which has this okay and uh today the, the 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 setup is only going to be for android so mac use so ios uh, it's going to be probably on the next video as well uh, i think the download is done so let me just 
open up my fun finder and go my to my download folders and start looking for this Google Play services you just copy this and if you come back to the page to this page they tell you to put it inside of the app what does it mean you just have to come here uh, back 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 you can close this you have to put it here inside of this app folder you just hit paste and okay done right uh, now after this is done you come here you click on next and uh, we have this the first thing the first line of code you have to copy and go back to your Android Studio. You open up the build griddle here on the Android level. Let me close the app. You want to select this one. Then here you're going to go to the dependencies and you're going to paste this. Then afterwards you're going to go to the second stuff you copy now you're going to open up app build gradle of the app and you're going to search the dependencies folder here you have it and uh, you're going to paste this And what finally you're going to come over here you copy this and you go to the very end of the file you paste it now you just hit next now uh, they want to confirm oh just rerun your app on your device um, you may need to completely stop the app and we are going to build this again so wait for a while now here uh, they're just trying to make sure oh we are just trying to make sure that the app is connected with the Firebase servers, so uh, that's why we are rebuilding the app. Okay, this may take a while. Let me check on my status here. I guess it's everything um, as it was supposed to this is good dust is good um okay 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 and here we have our app up and running so now what are we going to do is to come over here oops 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 not over here I'm used to use Chrome but we're going to come over here and as you can see everything ran has expected you just have to continue and uh, it's done it's done ladies and gentlemen feel free to be happy you just have your e-commerce app connected to the Firebase. Okay. So for the next video, I'm going to set up the iOS and now uh, we are going to do the Google sign-in. 
uh, feel free to ask me any questions regarding anything okay so uh, see you on the next one bye bye hello ladies hello gentlemen how are you doing I hope you're all doing fine because I'm doing fine today we are going to learn about something very important which is first first we're going to see uh, I'm going to give you a small introduction to Firebase Firestore and then we're going to implement the Google sign in for our application and after that is done we'll start uh, retrieving some data from the database on our Firebase so I really hope you guys are getting excited because the app is starting to look more like an app so let's do it uh, the first thing we are going to do is basically um, go to your browser in open firebase mine is already open so here you just click on develop and uh, develop you go to databases you can read this um, for the users since I want to implement a collection for the users you can use a real-time database it's uh, most of the times people use a real-time database because the cloud the Firestore is on beta version and uh, but anyhow we are going to use the Firestore because it's very cool even though it's beta version we'll just hit on create database create database oops what's happening okay let me just reload my page okay uh, just hit create database and it's taking more time than expected to open this page I don't know what's the problem okay let's do something easier you can hit create database for the real-time database and then we are going to switch but for you it's going to work if you create the database for the Firestore it's going to work I'm just finding a way around it because my page somehow is not responsive maybe because I'm not using Chrome and I'm using Safari I don't know but okay I went if you are able to just click on the Firestore icon and create database do that if you're not you can create click on the real-time database and from here you can just change to cloud first store and we're going to use this still on test mode and it's going to start creating our database okay uh, this is done I just want to give you a small introduction on how the structure of this works uh, imagine we want to create a group of users we would do what first we call this a collection and if you're familiar with real-time database no no with relational databases like SQL and this kind of stuff a collection imagine a collection has a table name okay so we can just put here user and the fields would be like the fields of the of that particular table you can write here ID of type string and value is going to be one two three and we can add another field we're going to call this field name and I'm going to write here Santos and here on the document ID is where we would put this one two three is like the primary key if you're working with relational databases but let me create and I'll try to explain you how this thing works 
so here I'm creating our so here we have the table name and here we have this field one two three for the users and this one two three is basically the same as this ID is just an identifier so if I want to create another user I would create a document and I would give it the document ID of four five six it has to be unique and here I'm just going to write ID and I'm going to repeat because uh, here for the document ID I'm giving basically the user ID 456 and I'm going to add another field and I'm going to call this field my connection is somehow not working properly today I don't know what's happening but okay and I'm going to add another field and I'm calling, call, calling this field name and here I'm going to give an awkward which is my second name and I like my name so that's why everything I use my name for everything but anyhow you see so in the app this would be like we're creating one user here his ID here and then we want to create another user we're going to use his ID here and here we have the content and uh, finally we can create just to make sure that you understand how this thing works 789 let's suppose is the ID of this user you have to write the field name is ID and the value is 7889 and I'm going to add a field I'm going to call this field name and the value of the name would be YouTube for example save so this is the basic concept okay you have the ID and through the ID you can access the fields and you can create another collection under these under this you can create another collection if you want to let's suppose I want to create a separate collection called address Oops. address and I'm going to click next and the document would be one for example and I would be what uh, what do you have for the address oh street and street ABC and uh, uh, town town anything and uh, what else what else country moon he lives on the moon save so under these for this particular user we have another field called address and have the values here and uh, you just it just has a way of showing you that under one document can add for example you have the user you just want to store username and some stuff and for the address you want to store everything together you can do it like that okay I really hope you guys understood this I'm going to erase all of this because we're going to do this stuff through our application this was just something for you to understand how it works okay I'll delete everything yes I want to delete everything now since um, we had our small introduction into Firebase Firestore we can now go to our app and implement the user login and all of that stuff okay oh uh, where's the app here we have it so how are we going to do this How are we going to do this? Uh, we are going to do this in a very, very special way. Let's create another images and what we have images and um, I'll create that on the pages. It's supposed to be on the pages because here we are going to create our login screen hey and now uh, let's just put here new dart file and we're going to call this file login but for our login to perfectly work we still have to import a couple of stuff here on our pubspec file 
and uh, just go to your favorite browser my happens to be Chrome and uh, write the uh, what Firebase out then flutter okay you just come here you hit on install and you know that you need this oh let's go to our pubspec file let's start putting putting in some work then uh, something else is firebase Firebase uh, Firestore. Okay, Cloud Firestore is here. Blah 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 blah. You come in, copy this. Go back to our app, and we're going to. Okay, and other than this, we need Google sign in. So just write Google sign in, and we have it here installing Google sign in. Uh, okay, we paste this here and what about shared preferences? Shared preferences. Installing. Copy and paste. Let me zoom to make sure you guys can see this. And one of you guys gave me the suggestion of making the videos 1080p. I would consider that. But the problem is that the videos are going to be very big and it's going to take a lot of more time for me to upload them. And uh, yeah, that's the problem. Um, the last thing you'll need to import here, we are importing quite a lot of things. It's called Flutter Toast. Is it toast like this? Yeah, it is. So we are going to install this. We have it here. And uh, let us pray that the pop spec file give, gives us no problem. Let me open and package get. Package get. Let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Okay, no problem. Don't mind the, right, the red line, no problem. It worked fine. Uh, but most of the times, the problem with the pub spec file is because of the indentation of the file. Okay? So, um,. This part is done. We can now start putting in some work. Okay. Oh, well, well, well. I can close this now. And uh, I'm going to import the material, blah, blah, blah. And uh, zoom this a little bit. Package, flood, the material, all dart. And then here, the login doesn't need to change nothing on runtime, so we'll just create a stateless widget, and we'll call this login. Okay, sounds sounds right. Um, I can put this on full screen. Maybe it's going to be helpful because I usually do this when we need to see the changes over here but we're not going to have any change for now on that screen so um, 
ladies and gentlemen no 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 this is not supposed to be a stateless widget create a stateful because something will need to change but you know what um most of the times when i'm creating a page and i'm not really sure if i'll need to change some content on runtime or not i just create it as a stateful widget and then i have nothing to lose doing that so you can just do it like that okay login i think it's safer for us to do it like this. Oh, then let us start importing some stuff. Um, we're going to need to import package, shared preferences. We're going to need to import another package. Oh, flutter toast. We're going to need to import another package. Oops. Import another package. And this one is going to be Firebase out here. We may need to import another package. And this one is going to be. Ooh, what is it? What is it? Google sign in. I hope there's nothing left. Oh, maybe there is something left. We're going to need to import a, a package, the Firestore, Cloud Firestore, this. Okay, we do have a lot of packages here imported, but anyhow, it's Gucci. Oh, now let us start putting some work in. We are going to create two final variables for now here and uh, final the first one is going to be a google sign in and i'm going to call this google sign in is equal to new google sign in we're just creating a, ba a basic object of the type google sign in and then we're going to create another uh, variable final for the for the Firebase authentication. Final. Then we're going to put here Firebase out. We're going to call this Firebase out is equal to Firebase out dot instance. Okay. We are going to create a variable, shared preferences. We are going to call this preferences. I like to pick the suggested names, okay. Then we are going to create another variable, two variables actually of type bool. One called uh, loading and the second one Mm, is logging is equal to false by default we're just going to put this false and uh, here I'm going to put false okay uh, let me take a time to explain to you guys you guys what's happening on the screen well, um, here seems like a lot, but actually it's nothing too fancy. We are just creating a variable of the type Google sign in, then Firebase authentication variable called Firebase out, shared preferences. If you don't know what shared preferences are, is like when you log in, let's suppose uh, you download an app on your mobile phone, okay? Then you log in for the first time, it's going to show you some tutorial screens, let's suppose. Then, ah, uh, left, left, you can do this and that and that and that. But if you open the app for the second time, it's not going to show you that again. What is that? Because there is a value stored somewhere on your mobile phone, like a set of values that define whether you have, whether it's the first, first time you're opening the app or not. Okay. 
so that's shared preferences then we're going to create the two variables of type bold bold now uh, we are going to we are going to create uh, override method for initial state okay and the initial state we can just call super dot initial state to call the initial state of the of the base class okay you don't need to understand this default stuff you just have to know that you have to write super you're just calling the initial state of this class over here and then uh, we are going to call a function called is signed in I can give that name is signed oops, oops, oops. signed in okay since you don't have this method created yeah it's going to give you that error just click on here and Ta -da! we create this method now uh, what are we going to do we are going to create this is going to be a sync a sync stands for asynchronous I can even put this up here I'll put it down here a sync basically means asynchronous is going to wait for something that's going to come on the future but while you're waiting you can be doing anything else so trying to break it down in the more, most simple way possible something like that so <clears throat> here first we are going to set state of loading is equal to true because as soon as we start uh, doing what having a look on this or executing this function to check whether the user is signed in or not while the function is executing we're supposed to be loading the screen okay oh uh, then after that we are going to create preferences is equal to await shared preferences dot get instance okay we are assigning an instance of the shared preferences to this variable await because this is a feature method uh, it's something that it's going to come somehow in the future for example when you are loading your Instagram or any kind you and you have that round thing circling it's basically because you are waiting for the data to be loaded to your device so a wait is like hold on until you get the value from this you wait a bit okay and I'm trying to put this in the most uh, simple way possible I really hope you guys are understanding okay then for our is logged in remember that we created this this variable is logged in is going to be equal to await again because we want to hold for a bit uh, google sign in dot is signed in and this is going to return a bool is going to check whether the user is signed in or not okay so if statement is logged in is true uh, you don't have to write if it's true because if it's true it's going to be true okay to make it simple for you guys you can write it like this writing this is the same as just writing this okay so um, 
for this case, if it's true, we'll want to do what? Uh, navigator dot push. And we're going to do something called push replacement. What's the difference between push and push replacement? Not named, only push replacement. Uh, the push replacement, once the page changes, the user doesn't have the ability to hit the backspace and come back to the login. Since we are going to do what? We are going to log the user in. We don't want to give him the ability to go back to the login page since he's in. Unless he does a logout, of course. So, um, material page route. The builder context here is going to be context. And from here, we are going to go to our main page. So we may need to home page, actually. So we may need to card login profile. Okay, let me open up the main. Okay, home page is here on this main page. It wasn't supposed to be. I would need to create a separate file from that for that. But okay, that's not a big issue. We can see what we do about that afterwards. But but I think we should organize this now. So let me create another file here. New file. I'm going to call this Dart file home page or simple home simply home okay import as you know package flutter dot okay I'm late I'm too lazy to write sometimes so I just spend more time searching for the auto completion but it's done and then we're going back to the main page let us copy this stuff here where does it start and where does it stop okay from here i can just oops 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 from here just below the main i can just copy everything and go to our home page and do what do what paste it okay we have a couple issues here and there but that's not a problem we'll go back to the main and we are going to cut all of these as well and I'm going to paste this here and what we need to do now is for the main we'll need to import the home so let me zoom import you can do something very nice just do it like this you see packages home so you don't have to write flutter blah 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 just did just do dot slash and write the directory the problem is gone now um but no we don't want to go to the home actually from the main we want to go to the login page so here instead of home all right dot login and here we are going to load the login page for now and then here on our login page is where we are going to do import Since it's in the same folder, maybe I don't need to write that. It's not a directory. Let me just try to write import home.dart. Oh, ha, ha, ha. and it does work. Um, since you are in the same directory, just write the name of the file. Now, uh, let us go back here. And from here, we are going to return a new home page okay it's done probably we'll need to pass some info here but let's give this the basic structure then we're going to 
start analyzing that. Okay. Uh, after this is done, because the user is logged in, we are going to do something very easy, which is setting a state of loading is equal to false because we know that the user is logged in also okay um, I don't know this uh, how long did this video have been but I feel like it's going to be kind of long now uh, going back here let me just give you a small explanation I don't like to just jump to a new stuff while we probably didn't completely get the first one so um, here guys what's happening we are seeing when you load the login page at first go and uh, execute this method the is signed in method okay so what happens in here on this method you're going to do void is signed in a sync meaning the method is asynchronous we'll be waiting for something that's going to come from the future I don't know if that makes any sense but basically means that while we're processing something we can be waiting for something else then here when we uh, begin the method we're going to do set state uh, loading is equal to true to make sure that we have that circular thing uh, symbolizing the loading we'll, we'll, we'll configure this no problem then the preferences is equal to get an instance of this of the shared preferences and uh, it's logged in is equal to await Google signed in uh, this is just to make sure if the user is signed in on Google or not and if if he is this is going to be true and then we are going to redirect the user to our home page then loading is equal to false uh, now let us handle what happens if the user is not uh, signed in if you are watching this video on YouTube unfortunately it's going to stop here this is the part one and I'm going to publish the part two of the video afterwards if you want to continue watching this video today and now make sure to go visit my website www.sanchenok.com and uh, I upload videos more frequently there so if you're still eager to learn about this now and you, you don't want to wait for the next time I'm going to upload on YouTube just go and visit my website register for free no problem and you can still and you can watch the content and um, moreover I publish more videos there than I do on YouTube so make sure to go check that but if you don't want uh, just wait for the next upload and it's going to come very soon okay uh, thank you for watching see you on the next video let's go back to the app now so here is where we left off with the part one and uh, this is the part two what are we going to do here is first we're going to create a method of the type future as I told you, uh, futures that a type that means we are waiting for something. It's asynchronous, basically. And we are going to call this uh, handle sign in. Then we are going to give this a sync to show that it's a future type and is asynchronous. So uh, here we are going to create first preferences is equal to await shared preferences dot guest get instance. Then we are going to do here get oh sorry set and we are going to set what is loading. No, not 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 not. We are going to set loading equal to true, correct? And then 
under here, we are going to create Google sign in and then we're going to give this Google sign in equal to await Google sign in no we did the Google sign in sorry now we, are, we want to do the Google account yes Google sign in account because here from here we want to get the Google sign in account or simple put I'll put here Google user is equal to await Google sign in now dot sign in as simple as that then we are going to create another type called Google authentication and I can call this Google out Okay, Google authentication. So I'll just leave it like that. Is equal to Google user dot authentication. Okay, uh, we need to put await here because this is a future type. Await. And no, it's not over if you think it is. Now we have to create a Firebase user. And I'm going to give it Firebase user again. Is equal to await, you guessed it, Firebase out dot uh, sign in with Google. Okay, and as you can see here, for the sign-in with Google, you need to provide some parameters. Which are the ID token, which is going to be Google Authentication dot ID token zoom out a bit and let me try to organize this so you guys don't suffer don't suffer uh, then <clears throat> we have Google authentication again dot access token you don't have to worry about this is going to be automatically generated by Google and you just have to paste this stuff like that there then we want to check something if what if our firebase user is not null meaning if he exists let us start doing something here and else we'll do something else okay so if our user exists somehow we'll, we will firstly check if he is signed up okay how do we do that uh, we are going to write a query snapshot basically we are going to query our collection as I showed you before that's why I had to show you how Firebase structure how Firestore structure works so, uh, it's going to be final, then uh, query snapshot, and I'm going to call this result. It's, it's going to be the result of the snapshot, basically. Then, await Firestore instance a dot collection and the name of the collection is going to be users okay we 
where id which is the user id is equal to firebase user dot uid user id <clears throat> i'm sorry about that uh, let me close this and i do have an error here let me try to see what's happening what does it say a value of query can be assigned a value of query snapshot okay it's easy just write dot snapshots is it snapshot or get documents oh no it's get documents sorry sometimes we forget the syntax get documents so um final uh we're going to create the result is going to be a final instance of what the firebase firestore and here we want to query a collection and for the, this collection the fields we want to check where the id of that particular field is equal to the id of the firebase user which we're going to gain from this if we have that means our user is already signed up to the application okay okay then uh, after this what are we going to do is final again and now this is going to be a list of the type document snapshots and uh, we can give this the name of docs or documents depends on how you like it I'll give it documents the name is up to you is equal to result dot documents easy peasy oh yeah now there's a lot of hassle here so there's a lot of things we want we have to do to make this stuff work but okay that's not a problem and the other problem is that I usually hate when I have to write a lot of code without testing it I have to write lines and lines of code and then run it but unfortunately for this case in particular we have no other go we have to write code and then we're going to test them and find out if we have some bugs and fix them okay now we're going to do if documents and I'm starting to comment less I'm noticing dot length is equal to zero basically means if this particular user doesn't exist on our collection what are we going to do we are going to sign him up basically meaning we are going to create the user and uh, insert the user to our collection okay uh <clears throat> fire oops 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 fire store dot instance dot collection users is this the name I gave here? Users, users. Okay, the collection must have the same name. Then for this user, we're going to create a document, which is going to be what? Firebase user dot UID. And for that, we're going to set data. And our set data is going to take a map, okay? And how is this going to work? Let me try to put this on a very good structure. 
how is it going to work now uh, let us input some values to our map first our ID is going to be equal to firebase user dot UID correct um, and I'm having an error here what is it saying missing selectors such as identifier what oh sorry 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 this is not supposed to be equal it's supposed to be column key value pairs okay no problem um what username column firebase user dot display name and what what else can we need from the user is the photo I'll just write profile picture profile picture and the profile picture is going to be equal to firebase user dot photo URL okay uh, seems like there's a lot going on because probably there is a lot going on but here let me take you guys a look and if you're getting fed up from from me always repeating what I just wrote and you can understand I just I'm sorry and I, I, I just want to make sure that everyone is in the same pace because there is a lot of things going on on this screen and uh, maybe somehow someone doesn't understand but okay enough of that uh, what's happening here for our future uh, handle sign in we're going to create type of shared preferences and essentially okay that's not the goal let's go straight to this first we're going to create a Google sign in account type and this is going to be a Google user then await google sign in dot sign in okay we're going to sign this user in then we have uh, google sign in authentication google sign in authentication is going to be what await google user dot authentication we're going to authenticate this user which we just signed in and then we're going to have firebase user this is what we want now is going to be equal to firebase authentication dot sign in with Google and then for the ID token you're going to have the Google sign in authentication ID token and then access token is going to be this if this uh, executes perfectly we are going to have what we are going to query our collection and first look for the user if we have a certain user which the ID of the user is equal to the Firebase user ID we just got from this expression okay so uh, here we're just taking the result and assigning that to a list if the documents dot length is equal to zero if the list is empty meaning we have we don't have any user with the same ID as this one we are going to insert that user on our Firebase collection and this is going to work like this okay if you guys have any kind of doubts after this feel free to contact me okay enough of that um, there's another thing that we have to do here which is await preferences dot set string we'll save this into our shared preferences id is going to be equal to firebase user dot uid and then we're going to create another weight again preferences dot set string username 
is going to be equal to what? Uh, Firebase user dot display name. And we're going to have await preferences dot set string for your URL. This is going, we're going to use this afterwards. It's going to make it quicker to load some basic information of the user, even when their connection is not very good. Mm. Then I'm going to give you a Firebase user dot display name. Okay. I think that's everything we need to have now. Now, um, let us come out of this. If this document does exist, meaning that the user exists, we're not going to insert him to the database. We are just going to do what? We are just going to set our shared preferences. Here. And here, instead of having this, we are going to have something else. We are going to have, um, where's that, where's that? Documents here. We are going to have documents. Index 0. And what do we want from this is ID. Oops, it's supposed to be in here. ID. Mm, let me copy this and I'll just paste it over this stuff here. And then for the username, you're going to have your username and um, Finally, what? For the for URL, we're going to have here for URL and here for URL. So if the user does exist, we'll just take the data from the documents and um, insert that into our Shared preferences. Okay. And uh, if this is successfully done, we'll have here flutter toast dot show toast, and the message of the toast will be uh, login. Or what completed successful okay locked in or logged in was successful okay and then if the login was successful then we have to do something else which is set loading is equal to false and before we leave here we will need to go back to our home page right and uh, probably we will need to pass some of this information to our home page but okay I'll see how we're going to that's why we have all of these preferences set okay okay guys I went ahead and fixed that error and uh, the app is now up and running and if everything everything is working nice for you you're going to have something like this okay so uh, how do you fix it is not 
like probably you're not going to have it it's not something that's going to happen but if it happens you just have to come to the android directory and open the app and then open the build gradle and then you have to pass this code implementation com dot android dot support column support okay i'll try to leave this somewhere you guys can access uh with no problem and i'm i'm sorry for the background noise but okay anyhow just let us give a small retreat retreat retweak re re oh sorry <laughs> let me give a small retweak on the app on the look of the login page actually and now uh, we are going to do just basic stuff like just add a styling there and just make it oh sorry text style and we're going to give this color colors dot I'm going to give this a red with shade 900 which is this darker red I like it elevation I'll give it 5.1 and uh, let us give a small background color to this led button color colors dot red dot shade 900 and um what else let us change the color of the text so it doesn't be doesn't come black oops um style then you're going to add a text style colors okay color then colors dot white okay a small refresh here and we have something like this um okay we didn't have time to work very much on the UI but anyhow let us go to the moment of truth pressing here you click on this this wasn't supposed to be here and we have an error here let us see what the problem is and how can we fix this and I'll try to put this on a better place but anyhow um, platform exception sign in failed okay okay Google services out of date requires but found okay uh, this problem if you're running on a real device is not going to happen but since this is not a real device we have it how to fix this we just need to update our Google services and uh, we have different ways of doing that you can come here to your simulator and uh, this is what needs to be updated let us press in here and go first of all here to your google play services it's going to take a while loading and here is where you have to update so when you're running this on a simulator and you encounter this problem you see that's the problem we are using the version 11 and it requires 12 let's click update okay it may take a while just come here and hit update and it's going to start downloading this so you better do this even before you run the app I was supposed to do it but whatever man uh, after this update everything will work just fine and as I said the problem of writing a lot of code and then having to test at once 
is that most of the times you will end up having uh, multiple errors but that that's not an issue let's give a center here instead of the container only and here let's give a container and uh, for the alignment of this container we can give alignment dot center and finally we're going to put here the color I can put here dot nine okay and let us run the app and this time I'm positive that everything is going to work fine but if you're running this on a real device you're not going to have that problem probably but for the emulators most of the time you have that you just have to update your google play services and it's all you have to do okay it may take a while to have everything running to have everything up and running okay let's hit the login and see what happens and here we have it ladies and gentlemen it is up and running uh, let me just do a small oops oops i may need to press outside the app i was trying i am trying to do a small screenshot so i will use this image as a thumbnail I'm sorry for having to do that on the video, but you know. You know. Just a second. And it's done. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Now you have to you will pick your Google account. And it's processing and processing and we are in ladies and gentlemen your Google sign in it's working we should be happy it took us a lot of time to make this work but thank God it's working now let us go and give a look on our firebase and see how things are oops, oops. if I reload the page on our Firebase. This is what's going to happen. I'm sorry, I have to click on uh, authentication. Mm -hmm. Oof, man, I don't know what's happening today, but I just logged in to the wrong Firebase account. The one I need is here. Database. And as you can see we have here users and we have the details of the user like the username the ID and everything it's working perfectly and if you go over here authentication oh there's a small thing you need to do in order to make this work you have to come you have to um, sign in method you have to enable these the Google and the password I should have told you this at the beginning of the video but okay I'll leave a note but anyhow uh, thank you guys very much for watching from the next video onwards we will start working with the posts okay this was a very long video 
and I'm going to divide this into different parts to be able to upload it. Uh, thank you for being part of the team and see you in the next one. Bye. Hello beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, well, guys, now it's time for us to start putting in some important work. Uh, if you've been following the tutorials, uh, you have this, like this is what we did on the last video, and now it's time to get things going. Uh, we're going to implement the email login, and the um, Google login is already done, but other than that, the goal is to have all of the user information on our Firebase database. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to do this on a single video, or I'm going to take two to do this, but... Yeah, let's do it. And another thing that I want you guys to notice is that uh, at the beginning I used to write this code and then test it before and then uh, make another video doing that. But now I don't really have a lot of time to do that. So on this video I'll be trying new stuff. So if I make some mistakes and uh, this and that, please forgive me for that. Uh, because I don't want to take uh, much time waiting for this to happen. I'm just going to do uh, everything on the spot. Okay, done. Now, uh, here's where we left off on our last section. Let's start by doing some changes on our UI. Um, I'll put this on full screen for now since we don't really need to see that. Okay. And let's start to think about our UI. Mm -hmm. Now we have this on our stack, but I may need to change this from stack to column. need to change you guys to column or even better I can leave it as a stack because I want to take this down to the bottom of the screen so oops 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 what I can do to is let me zoom let's integrate a bottom navigation here and then I'll use a container and then as a child I'll put this here okay uh, other than that let me add some padding to this so Okay, I can add exactly here on the button. Just click on the widget and let us add padding. Okay, we can take a second to see what happened. Hold on, wait a second. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, okay I still have a center widget here I can get rid of get rid of this as well okay so here's what we wanted we have this at the bottom Mm -hmm. what can we do now is let me, let me try to fit both the code and our device on the screen so that we can be able to view both okay oh another thing that I want to do still in here is to add um, the 
brightness color okay now what we will come back to this that button for now we can leave it like this what I can do is change the padding because I want the login option to be at the bottom so let us use only uh, here for left padding I'll use something like 12 let me copy this code paste it paste it paste it okay right side we'll take it 12 for the top however I'm going to go with 8 and for the left side oh bottom side actually bottom 8 and let's see how it reflects on the app we increase the padding over here and I think this is fine this is super fine uh, now what else can we do is let me go back to the code just taking a while to work with our UI let's remove the app bar I think it's not required to have it now uh -huh. with that out of the way we will want to add a image uh, I just downloaded an image here Mm, Paxels is a good site. I came searching for fashion and I found a good one. I think you can come here and download your images. And here's the image. I'll provide the link to this, but the image I downloaded is here. What is it? It was. It was this image here so I have this image I'll show in folder okay here is the image um, first of all let us rename it oops what did I do okay I'll remain I'll rename this image to uh, back a background image and I think this is good enough I'll copy you mm -mm -mm -mm. copy and let's go back to our app to our images folder Okay, and, and we will paste that just like that. New, not, 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 not. How long to do is paste. And it's asking for to paste, paste. Okay, so uh, I'm planning on using that image on our UI. Oh, uh, yes. This image will be available on our Git as well. So you'll get it from there. I'll give it a link. Anyways. Um, anyways let us open the pop spec file and there's something I used to do that I don't really need to which is this so I just have to give the images folder to make sure and like just like that I will include everything inside of our images directory so just hit packages get boom and it's done now uh, we got the home what we want right what are we here on the login so what are we going to do now is to uh, 
uh, let's include that image over here. That inside the visibility right here. Mm. I'll just copy this to give us some time. Login all you want, but that's not supposed to be passed like that in here. Here's going to be image dot asset, and back we are going to give the name of the image is back back dot jpg. Okay, I hope that's right. And fit, you want to do a box fit cover. And for the width of the image, I want to do double infinity. So this section, all these pieces of code are just to make sure that our images fills the whole screen. Now let's rerun the app and see if we can see the difference or what and yes we can hmm things are starting to look nice don't you think so guys but okay there's still a couple things to change uh for example i don't think that this is something super good to have this white section in here so we can try to integrate our um this button inside of this i think that that would look better um integrate that inside of remove that from there and integrate it here okay <clears throat> let's not work with the color of this now Come back to the um there is no find a good way which we can use to include these in here i could use a column there you know what for now let's leave it there and then we're going to change that afterwards and i think it doesn't look that bad does it hopefully it doesn't okay oh so what else can we do now is this uh, new not new um, container because I want to include the logo the good news is just I went ahead and worked with my design capabilities and I create a basic logo for our app so alignment I want to align this to alignment dot uh, what's that top 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 center top center something like that and for the child of this I'm going to provide image asset as well okay so now uh, let me include that logo in here where the logo is at um, if I open here I guess I left it on my pictures and I do have a couple logos in here okay here we have our logo I'll just rename this to be easier for me I'll just write a logo 
dot png I'll copy that and after we have that copied we are going to do the same process just come here and paste it on our images folder so do you want to paste a logo.png okay include that on the repo yes and what we have to do now is to go to our pub spec file and packages get again and boom it's done now we can come uh, again back to our login and I'll just copy this piece of code here and I'll paste it over here mm -mm. okay I'll take this piece of code in here and I'll paste it over here and here we're going to change this to logo.png okay then let's give this a width of what mm, I'll try one 50 and equally height of 150 so let's rerun the app and uh, see if something does change on our app um, okay we're not able to view our logo let's make sure we have the logo well downloaded and try to open it okay so uh, what can be the issue here I think is this okay images slash uh, logo let me run it again images slash logo dot png logo dot png seems correct let's try to display our logo then we don't have it okay let me try to comment on our current background image and see if maybe the logo images <laughs> so the image logo is not displaying I'm not 100% sure why let me go again to the pop spec file and do packages get just to make sure that we have that we have the packages up and running for the images okay oh uh, and that's the new information as well the app is going to be called flash and mixture of flutter and fashion so doesn't have to sound very nice as long as it makes sense a bit okay that's not the point here let us try to get our logo hmm we don't have it so what's happening here let me for now try to get rid of the width definition and see if we are going to get our logo okay for a very strange reason we don't have it uh, and I don't seem to find where I did the error logo.png here and have logo.png here the same way we have back the png and the images seems to work just fine uh no problem that's not a very big problem mm, let me just do a one last try 
which would be to delete this and uh, try to run this for one last time and our logo image is not showing for now okay I'll, I'll, I'll give a look into that I think it's not something that we should stop uh, because for now I'll comment here and I'll see why oh, oh, oh. maybe there's a point I'm missing here but anyways hold the logo for a second um, you can just come here and comment to do Then I'll write here make the logo show, and I'm going to come back to that. Uh, now, now that we have this, what else? What else can be done? Here is okay. Let me add the container. Container. So uh, by using this container, we can uh, get a color uh, overlay. Uh, and uh, what can we do is let me put this on full screen. Uh, let me. Uh, first of all, I would like to integrate this over there. So here, instead of a stack I can go ahead and use a column no I'll do like this we'll do I can wrap this stack inside of a column we're going to expand this stack but still maybe getting these outside boom 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 because I'm not really fond of this design here because of this white space left here okay we will see what we, what, what we do about that let us continue working <clears throat> let us add a color overlay to this so I'll give these a colors then let's start with black with opacity 0 0.2 for example and for the width I'm going to give this a double dot infinity and the height as well uh, this basically means the this is supposed to take all of the space available both for the height and for the width control save this and see the difference it's darker now I don't know if you guys can notice Let if I change this color for something like red maybe it's more notable you see okay uh, so with that part out of the way let us just one second oh sorry just a second yes okay now uh, what do we want to do here is we will want to add a form a login form so I'll put this on full screen for now and I'll go back we have our stack here Con container defining our colors and um, let me add another container 
okay container and for the alignment of this container I'll give align alignment dot center and again inside of this for the child I'm going to use a center widget and for the child of the center widget I'm going to use a form and as a child of the form I am going to use something called flexible oh no can we oh if you want to we can just go something like column here or flex and give it children So we have an error. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Where is that problem? I can see it. it's telling us we have an error. We're having an error. Mm -hmm. One error then. Okay. Give it a time. We will see when we try to run the app. Now, uh, let us make use of final form key. So, uh, working with forms, with forms is something I like more because you can validate the forms. Uh, we're going to create the key for that particular form, and the key is going to keep track of the form state. Okay. So uh, here, where is that? Here we can just use uh, a column. Problem solve. Now, what are we going to do? In here is to inside of the form we can define first even before in here let me define the key of this form and as we gave their form key let me indent everything so inside of this we have some column elements and uh, now we are going to define our input text input forms <clears throat> sorry and we have here for the login we're going to use the email and the um, password well and for the email we're going to need some validation I have some validation code here I'll just copy that and I'll explain to you guys what's what and how things are happening let me just copy this widget here and I'll place that here so <clears throat> here's what is passed uh, what do we have here we have let me create to solve that error we have down below just come about here and create something called a text oops, 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 oops. something called the text edit controller and we're going to call this uh, email text controller is equal to new or just to text edit controller and uh, since we here 
let's create another text edit controller for our password so uh, the text edit controller is going to allow us to retrieve the values that are present on the input fields of a text input or form or anything that has an input to it okay so um we don't need this here we have text form field uh, pay, pay attention now I'm not using a normal text field it's a text form field okay and um, here inside of the text form field because it's what we use to insert text into the, the, the form we have a decoration then we have oh better yet I can try to run this show you what happens and then explain it to you Oops, 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 it's very difficult to see it, but it's here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it's more visible than that. It's very here at the top. So, uh, what we can do here is the following. Because uh, what made me copy? What made me copy here? Is because I wanted this validation, so I will erase the rest. I'll do one thing to make guys, to make sure you guys understand what's happening. Because I don't want you to feel like you're just copying something. Oh, some people not understand. I'll cut this. I'll cut this uh, validator, and I'll come down here. I'll paste it. And I'll comment. Then I'm going to use it here now. To this widget, the text form widget, let me clean everything and write so you guys. So we have here text form field. Okay, because we want to have a text input. And in here, we are going to give the decoration oops, oops, oops. and our input decoration. First, we have the hint what's going to be written here, and what's going to be written is the mail. Mail. And what else can we define in here? What else can we define in here? I can now uh, for the login. What 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 are we going to use? The email of the user or the user name? Okay, I think going with the email is better. So icon. Let's just give this icon icon dot email. Then what else can we use here? Mm, we can make use of border. Uh, border circular values. Oh, we can do this outline input border something like that and um, okay mm, we have a lot of attributes that we can actually define here and uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just putting stuff here we have a lot of things that we can do. Let us see what this does. 
if you can see now we have this here so it's not but it's not very easy to view it so what I will do here is try to wrap this on a, a new widget and this can be a material widget and now for the radius of this widget we're going to give a circular radius of 20.0 for example and for the color um, let us give this uh, colors Ooh. what's happening colors dot white dot with capacity 0 0.5 elevation of 0 because you don't want any shadows from this and here how can we how can we how can we remove this because I don't really want any okay I'll, I'll remove the border for now and try to control save this and see what happened hmm better now what we are going to do is add a padding to this so at padding maybe not at 8 but something like 4 Broom, 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 broom. and to the material I'm going to add padding as well and let's see how things are coming up good I think um, let's add padding on the left Okay, something like 12. Okay, so we are starting to have our app having some form. Um, now, here again for our controller we are going to use our email the text controller to get and retrieve the text from here mm. let me see I'm trying to remember how can we remove this and I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure of how I remove because I want to remove this this line down here I don't really like it that much but okay if I do it like this it's going to make things look strange so let's let's leave it the way it is for for now and um, here we have our email text controller is going to retrieve the values from our input form and here we have something very very important that usually we don't have on normal text fields which is the validator and um, let me copy and paste this code because the pattern is kind of oops oops I wasn't supposed to paste that inside of the creation 
it has to be here okay so now we have this pattern is very long and I wouldn't be able to remember this anyhow we have the validator value we are going to catch the value from this text field and if the value is empty we are going to display this message now if the value is empty or if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't follow this pattern and here we are doing a regexpress oh basically we are just taking creating this variable of type regexpress expression and then uh, what are we doing is we are making sure or we are asking if this expression inside of the if if regex which is the va the variable here matches the, the the value or if this value follows this pattern here because we're creating the pattern and this is the pattern okay and then we are creating a variable of type regexpress which is going to take this pattern as an attribute and then for the if we are going to check if this value here is going to match or if this value which we are going to get from the input field will follow this pattern so I hope that was not very difficult for you guys to understand um, now we are going to need to use this again to get the password so what are we going to do here is tag the padding here and just adding just copy and uh, paste this again and differently here we're going to write the validator for our own selves to make sure that we understand um, seems like there's a lot of things going on here I hope you guys are able to keep track Um, where, where, Oops, what am I trying to do? Here, then we are supposed to, oh, here's what I'm supposed to write, and I'm getting confused. Okay, um, let's focus on this, and the controller now is going to be what? password text controller and here for the text I'm going to write password and for the icon here um, let's try something like lock we have here lock outline and um, let us use a validator let us write one we have value which is the value we're going to get from the form and first we'll check if then the value um, dot is empty we want to return something saying the password cannot be empty and then else if let's suppose we want the password to be at least uh, six characters long value dot uh, length is smaller than six We are going to return the password has to be at least but this is very useful for the registration not the not the login I'm just using it to show it at least six characters I 
this spell not in here. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a Mario there you can... Okay. So this is how the validator works. Uh, let me try to do a control save on this and see how it reflects on the app. We have the password field and we do have the email field over here. Uh, what we can do here is try to let me go back 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 here and try to use a color like black because I don't really like how the red is coming out. Sounds way more better. Oh, fields make sense. I'll put this on four. Yep. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, I will add. A top padding to this container of I want only top only top and the value is going to be 16 Still not enough. Still not enough. So what can we do here? What can we do here? Mm -hmm. Let me try to remove this and calm down. Here, what did I do here? What did I do here? Oops, oops, control Z. I'm trying to center the forms uh, so I had to remove it from the container and uh, still it comes to the top okay I'll do this using padding no problem I'll add a padding here uh, of all of top of only on the top and the padding is going to be of uh, something like a thirty on the top control C not good enough 80 pixels what about that still mm -hmm. 150 uh, is that high enough 200 Okay. Mm, I think it's it's starting to look good actually. Mm hmm What else what else can we do here? Is adding finally a button to login. So let us come in here.
copy this and after we did the copying paste it uh, we don't need this so so remove it clear here let's use something like blue to do the login uh, opacity of point a and for the child here let's use a text simple login text and for the text align uh, text align center let's see what happens ooh, 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 ooh. That's not exactly what we want. Um, no problem. Let us structure our uh, login button in a different way. We'll still use the material, of course, but here, let me put a child. Instead of putting text, there's something called a material button. It has an unpressed for now let us just leave it like that and um, apart for the unpressed uh, we can define some things here like minimum width of the button and let us use a media query here of context of course dot size dot width so uh, what is this going to do basically what is this going to do is make sure we take up all of the width of the parent widget on our case that's the material uh, so we have the unpressed now here we'll again pass a child of text and uh, now we can put login as a text um, text align we're going to do text align to the center and let us give some styling to our text you can use um, style. No, let us use the normal things like text style here. For the color, I'm going to give a basic colors dot white. What else? Does the font need to be bold or not? Okay, let us give it a bold font. Font. Uh, font rate dot bold. Mm, what about the font size? But let let us see how. Boom. And we are starting to have our design here. But that there's something I'm not enjoying very much which is this color blue what if we go with a red is it going to look any better but since we'll then go do a, a login with Google I don't know how good would that be okay let's leave it like that for now um how about we, rem we remove the opacity and just use red 
Okay, here we have it. And um, I think that I don't know how long have I been talking, so maybe that's a good time to stop. And I can say that we're done with the UI. Let's just give it a font size of 22. And from the next video, I can I can just go ahead and work with the back end of it. Tranny. Okay, guys. Um, so I hope you 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 enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. Mm, and finally, oh wait. I'm saying bye, but at the same time, it seems like I don't want to let you guys go. Uh, I'm just increasing the opacity here because I don't think five is looking good. So perfect. Now it's good. Now it's good. Here, just give it a ten. Hmm. For the bar the radius, just give it a 10 here as well. And we can leave the login like that, no problem. Okay. Uh for the email, do we have do we have a mail outline that would be very handy? Oh ho, ho, ho. we don't. But let me use that at symbol okay oh so guys here's the UI for the login on the next video we're going to start putting in some work but since we are here right now let me copy the sign in with Google option mm. here and do before I wrap up the video, I can take this Google find an option. You know what? I can come here and copy the login button again. And then Paste it here and do a sign in with Google. Cut this. Boom, 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 boom. Create the text here just above the heading of that button. And oops, a quick thing to do is other sign in options login since login is the word I'm using. Before that, let us use a divider here. other thing in options and Google it's perfect let us change this red here to blue again and do it. Okay. so now what are we going to do is coming down here I will copy the unpressed action and I will paste it here on our let me put this on full screen to make sure you guys understand what's going on. Uh unpressed action and I'll paste it here. 
what else can I do before I wrap up this video? Uh, here on the icons, let me try it. Do we have a Google icon here? Oh, we don't. That would be awesome. Um, hmm. So what's next? We have here other signing options and we have Google but this text is not visible so I'll steal the styling from here and I'll paste it here and it's fine and for the divider color color is that white as well I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Other looking option. Google. Okay, it's starting to look good. Let me just come over here and make sure I remove this. And um Okay. I would have to rerun the app to fix that bug. <laughs> and we have a small, small, small problem here with the height of the picture. And how could we? Fix that. Just a quick fix. A quick fix. So we finish this part of the video. Boom, 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 boom. Where do we define a fix fill? Let's try to stretch this using height see if that's going to solve our problems um, ta -da. our problem is fixed and um, what is left to do here boom 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 We can do something like go back to that column widget here and uh, let's try to push all of that stuff downwards. So for our padding here on the login, I can just create a expandable widget, expanded widget and see if it's going to push our UI down <gasps> no that's not what we want no that's not what we want that's definitely not what we want to do go back to normal and I think I know what I can do here is just about this divider can I create the container an empty container and um, in here let us create a new widget and uh, sign in approval downwards Hello beautiful people, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing good because I'm doing great. Well, uh, first of all, as you can see here, our simulator is kind of different today because I'm using my real device, not the simulator because it's kind of slow when I use this Android simulator and stuff. I'm using my real device and I'm using this software called Visor. 
but this is the free version so the video quality because I'm screen casting um, on my computer so sometimes the quality of the video gets really 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 bad but don't mind it as long as you can see what's happening here we are good uh, what else as you can see again our UI is kind of different uh, the image on the background I didn't change it is just not displaying on this screencast and on my mobile I don't know why but you'll still have it and uh, here let me open up the code and I'll show you a couple of stuff I changed and then we can move forward um, if I open the project and I go to my pub spec file again guys I really had to just come over here and uh, add for the if you remember the logo was not showing so I had to come here and add it explicitly uh, I did this before just adding the images folder to get all of the image inside of the folder because you can do that but for whatever reason that's not working for me I don't know what's happening but it's just not working so I had to come manually and add the image logo and the Google logo uh, that's it here oh, what else if if I go back here okay I just fixed the issue with the if you can see uh, now the image is visible our UI is looking good again uh, so let me let me still show what happened inside of our code because it did change some stuff blue 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 coming down here now the logo is working so I can remove this to do you just have to go and add the path to the logo on the pub spec file this will make the code work again and uh, the, the second thing I did if you remember this was a column like inside of the form your form form key column and here now we are using a list view and change it to list view uh, you need to do that and uh, finally uh, I want to remove the Google sign-in option I mean it was good to learn it and maybe we'll use afterwards on other projects but here is not super 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 important so I will just remove that from now on and uh, we'll see what happens afterwards but for now let's just remove the Google sign-in option Um, this other option blah 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 remove it and again the second thing I did was just adding this text here um, don't have an account click here to sign up that's the second thing I did adding this text here let, let us run a control save to see how the code is right now and this is how the app is looking and we have the hunt don't have an account click here to sign up now and um, what else we're going to do here now that we don't have the Google sign in uh, we will change the code a bit but I rather go this way it's important maybe afterwards on the future we'll come and implement that again but for now let's just use the normal email and password uh, what else uh, there's a new widget I used to write this but you don't really need to use a text spam you can use a row or normal text to do this right if you don't have an account click here to sign up and anyhow you will have the link for this code on the description if you just want to have what we have here you can just go and copy that but I think this part at least regarding the UI is something you guys can do
and I don't want to waste no more time on basic 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 stuff because if you made it this far I believe that you are able to um, at least implement this you don't have to use a text spam but if you want to use just use a rich text as a child and text is one of the properties you give text spam and style we just write as if you're styling a normal text a widget and you give color color white the the width the width of 400 and font size of 16 text spam then you write don't have an account create one text spam again sign up uh, but as I told you if you don't want to use this and if you think this is kind of complicated just use a normal text sign up or use a row then give this text then this one so this kind of an assignment for you guys try to do that by yourself okay and uh, back on the video 25 to 26 you guys have been complaining that there is a mismatch uh, but what happened there is that I was having an error. I just didn't edit the video correctly But I was having an error and I stopped the video and I came back when I solved the error It's not a major issue. You can jump that part and just continue and uh, you're not going to have major problems Okay, let us start working now um, We are going to change this code a bit. I mean not really a bit kind of completely and now uh, how we're we going to do this let me okay let us not clean everything let us do this gradually and what are we going to do here is um We will create a sign in with email. Okay. Uh, we'll create an account using our email and um, we did write a lot of code, just erasing it feels bad, but. We have to do what we have to do, guys. Let's let's erase this. Don't cry, don't cry, guys. Don't cry. Let's erase this, and we'll find another way to go about doing this. Uh, the first thing I want to do here. What? Did I just delete the phone key? Or what? Because I'm seeing an error here regarding the phone key. okay um, on this video we are going to create the user finally and uh, I want to make this a quick 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 super quick tutorial I want to make it super long so we are going to do things a bit And here for the pad, let us start by editing the padding here. And now we will use something called padding from left, top, right, and bottom. Uh, for the left, I'll give this something like 12, then 8.0, then right 12.0 again and 8.0 okay we have this mm, just come over here to our button paste it let's see the control save See how things are coming up. Uh, matter of fact, let me put this on full screen so that you guys can understand what's happening. Reformat the code to make sure it's visible. 
I didn't let's put 14 14 here for right padding and left padding and top we'll just leave it as 8 okay mm. put 14 here 14 here and now finally we're going to do the same over here give this 14 and give this 14 okay uh, what we want to do now is when um, we click here uh, can we can we new sometimes I use new because Android Studio just doesn't give me that lamp to just add a new widget and even now it's not giving whatever no. oh or new okay whatever no. let me try to inkwell boom 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 and we cannot use inkwell here and uh, that's a fun fact because I wanted to use a rich text in here but no worries we will do something else regarding this text I will go and follow the approach I was advising you guys to follow which is to use a simple uh, something like a row but okay let's make our life simple and instead of asking blah 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 don't have an account blah 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 we will just do here matter of fact let me see what I did mm -hmm. remove from here okay let's uh, remove the rich text and that's a plus if you guys didn't really understand how it works and we'll just add a normal text saying guess what you guessed it sign up And uh, let's give this a style. Oops, oops, oops. Sign up. Let's give this a style of text. Oh, 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 oh. Text style color colors dot red okay and now we can use an inkwell here just a detector but I like inkwell so let's go with inkwell and uh, here on tab we want to open a new page that we didn't create yet called the register so let me close because I have a lot of stuff open here. Okay, let us go to pages, just create a new one. Oh, we are going to call this one. Sign up. Okay. Um on the sign up page we're going to import packages flutter material so dart is going to be a stateful oh, sign up and for the body of this is going to take almost the same structure as the 
login page so I will just come here and copy this all of this huh. copy it let's go to the sign up page paste it we're going to have a couple errors don't worry go again back to the login page we need the loading is loading I don't know why I did this I was super distracted and uh, this just makes no sense to have it but okay uh, for now I will copy this and we don't need the Google sign in so I will copy this because it's important go again to the sign up page and I will paste that stuff here Firebase out needs to be imported so just click here oh, 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 oh. just click here and import it so what else do we need to keep track here boom boom is the loading so come here copy this and uh, after I copy that I will come over here and paste and finally what's the last thing for us to do Uh, we have the email the email here the password oh uh, let's do something let's create a confirm password controller Rest created text. Uh, let's create our name controller. Name text controller. Oh, let's create a string variable called gender. okay and uh, what are we going to do here uh, first of all we are going to remove this forgot password field but it's not required now and then here for the sign up we are going to write login We are going to give text line, text line center. <coughs> I'm sorry. And here we can give a basic navigator. Oh, 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 oh. Navigator dot. Pop context. Oh, there's a small issue here. Okay. <clears throat> what else do we need to do here is we will change here to register. Done. Uh, we have the password field we will duplicate this field too 
we'll duplicate this field to and the hint is going to be confirm password uh, what else we have the email here and the last thing that we want to have is the name Okay, this validation is not used for the name, so we can just remove it. And the name field cannot be empty. Okay, this is the basic structure we have. Now, let us go back here. Oh, now we have a couple issues here. What are the problems? Boom, 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 boom. Didn't I remove all of this? Let's 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 clear this up. Let's 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 remove this. Okay. On here we go. Let's remove this. Oops. And we will clear all of this stuff. And finally, we have here on tap for the sign up. And I'm going to, of course, you can navigate to dot push. Uh, sorry. Material page route and for the context here, let us give a context. Here we have to return a sign up. Sign up must be important as well. So Done. Let us rerun the app and see what happens. Okay, this is what we have now. First of all, this sign up is kind of in a bad place, but that's nothing. We can fix that. We can even go ahead and use a role view. Or simple fix of this would be would be for the sign up text would be something called uh tap the line text along center let us see if this will fix our problem and it does fix our problem okay then let us try clicking on it boom now we have the registering option we want to have the name the email the password and to confirm the password but let us change something over here over where um put this on full screen now let me put you on full screen go ahead to the name field where is that oh sign up not in the register okay let's go ahead to the name field 
boom, 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 boom. And still here is written password, so let's change this to uh, full name, for example. And for the icon, we will use person. Okay. But I would be very happy if they had something like person outline and they do have that and uh, our UI is looking like this now and in my opinion it's looking good and if I hit login I'm sent back here if I hit sign up this happens So here I can enter my name. Oops, oops, oops. This is happening because I just copied this. And somehow I'm giving reference to the same controller. Let me fix that issue. Hmm. Let me fix that issue quick, quick. Let me fix that issue quick, quick, quick. This must be the name controller. Um, this must be the confirm password controller. Okay. Okay. Hello beautiful people, how are you doing? Welcome back. Um, well, again you can see that I did some changes here and there, but I just changed the button color and that's not something to get worried about. Uh, I can do the same for the register screen, but uh, no issue on today's video we're going to do something super mega hyper awesome we will finally create our user and perform our login we will create our user on the database and we'll log him in on the app so with that being said let's get busy uh, let me put this on full screen boom what else uh, first of all, let's make sure we open the sign up and here instead of register, I'll write sign up. Done. What else? Oh, we need to change this color to red just to match the concept of it. Okay, uh, it's looking good. What else? No. Let us do something else. Um, because I don't want to have a lot of red here. We can just take this link and turn it blue. For the login. Done. Uh, something else you have to do is come over to the main screen or the main file and add this line theme we are defining some things for our app theme and then you write theme data primary color is going to be equal to red dot shade 900 so this is going to be the primary color of our app you have to come here and edit this perfect uh home page we're not going to use it now login page boom 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 oh for the login page Again, we're not going to use it now. Let us start working over here. And the first thing I may want to do is just write there before they may like guess it's fine. We can add this. Let's add a row. 
boom we have a row and uh, children okay just add a small comma here and I'm um, sorry if you can hear the background Roy is one of my neighbors is too excited today and he's making noise but okay that's not that's not our problem um, now what we want here come over here and uh, let's add string then here radio no group value and here let me put this as mail and you'll understand what I'm doing this in a second this height is not required so you can just remove it uh, we can keep on going down and down and down and down here we are going to add a new widget called radio and for the value of this radio we will put mail and for the group value we will write group value and on change on change we'll write something here and value changed and the value change is going to take our e so what's happening we are creating our first radio button here so that the user can select his gender if we may but this method doesn't exist yet so we may just come here create a method and instead of the inside of this method we will create the switch or if okay if statement if e which is the value is equal to mail um let's do something to make this even better remove this and uh, we can put the set state here is equal to m which is male group value is going to be equal to e and um else if our e is equal to female our group value is going to be equal to e again here is male not nail or what's this done So let's come back here to our radio button comma here and uh, let's try to do expand add a new widget expanded widget copy this come down here paste it and for the value of here we're going to give female Oops. female um what else what else can we do here let us create some padding into this or oh, is that is that something required to do mm, I don't know uh, matter of fact let me
add a list style to our then we're going to add a title mm, but the title is not going to be the radio button is going to be trailing is it like this oh I think I misspelled this okay now for the title we'll put text and inside of the text we can write oops, we can write uh, something like mail okay and uh, we will style this we're going to give this a text style at least for the color you can go colors dot white um and we still have the issue here but what i can do is for now i will oops 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 i will what's happening bro i will cut this and boom 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 okay uh, let me organize this code better oh we have our title text that goes until here and what we want now is a trailing and for the trailing we're going to pass this okay again Organize the code for now. Let me just delete this section down here and um, okay. Let me do something else here, which is. copying here and bring it over here um, so for the text something else we can do is for the text align let's go with text align center and see how things will be or oh, better yet we will go with text align dot end okay and I will copy this and I'll paste it here on our mail text align dot end mm, and here we will put female And the value is going to be female as well. Okay, let us see what's happening on our app. And this is what what's happening on the app. And if I click on female, it's going to select female. If I click on mail, it's going to select mail. Um, but this is not quite visible. Uh, so what we can do here is to. I'm sorry for the background noise again. Okay. Uh, what we can do here is. I can uh, wrap this row inside of a container widget and for the container widget we can just give a color then colors dot white dot with opacity 
zero point five or something. Uh, and then after that is done, we will we will want to have the padding here for our container. And even for the text, we can change the color. No, oh, I will give it 0 0.5. And uh, let us add the padding here. Why are you not giving me that lamp? OK, uh, so we will add padding. And uh, we will just copy the padding configuration for the other widgets and uh, oops I'm sorry for that and we will just paste that over here and if we go back to our app now we have something more or less like this so you can select male or female okay um, I think it's good enough there's not a lot I would like I would want to change anyways okay uh, with that part done let us actually create the user now uh, now let us let us do some 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 validation make sure that the validation is perfectly working fine and uh, the way for us to do that uh, first of all when we pick the gender I want to go back here to on value change and gender must be equal to E as well Same thing here, gender is not equal to E. Okay. Uh, for the password field, we want to do two things. First is coming over here and we want the obscure text to be true so that we'll just see dots, dots because it's a password. And for the confirm password, we will do the same thing. So we'll just see dots, dots again. Okay, uh, what else can we do here is, oh, uh, this validation is okay, this one is okay. And uh, else if, here, we want to see if the password controller dot text is not equal to value we want to return a text saying that the password is and the value inserted for the um, confirmed password do not match okay the password and the ma and the confirm or oh, I'll just write the passwords do not match done perfect right uh something else we may need to do here is for the border then we need in Put border dot none and just copy this to make sure that underline doesn't show that's why we're using this and um, just copy it and paste it everywhere inside of the input decoration make sure you get pasting on the right position blah 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 and for the full name the same thing 
uh, done. Is there something missing? Oh, well, I don't think so. I do not think so. Mm, now, if we are to view what's happening on our app, you see, now we don't have that underline here. We just have the text. And this is what we want. Fine. Awesome. Um, what else? What else is there to be done? And uh, just check this. When we're typing the password, now we're getting these dots dots because of what we did. Awesome. That's what we want. And um, finally, I'm trying to do something else. Giving the option to hide and show the password. Um, let us. Let us. Let, how can we do that? Is by coming over here. Okay, let's try. Let's try. Let's try. And we'll add a new widget here, which is going to be a list tile, of course, because I like list tile. And here, instead of child, you're going to give title. Mm -hmm. And then, make sure you wrapping the text form field in that title. And here, after the title, you're going to give a uh, sorry trailing widget, which is going to be icon button. Icon, we're going to give this icons we give them full screen to make sure you guys see. And for the icon here, icon icons dot I on pressed for now we'll just leave this as it is. Okay, and um, matter of fact, let me not use icon button because it's going to increment the width of the data field in a way I don't want. Let's just use the icon icons dot remove red eye. And this is what happens. Because of the icon, this password field it's bigger than the normal of the other fields. So I don't know if that's something we will want to live with. I don't know, I don't know. But having this functionality to view the password, what you're actually typing, it's something very useful. But I don't want to compromise the design as well. So what can we do is let me try something. And if I think it's looking fine, maybe we can do it like that. Uh, let's just take this padding. done and we will paste that underneath the email field and we'll paste that underneath the email field to see how it looks okay and uh, for the password I think it doesn't make much of a difference using icon or icon button at the end of the day I'm getting the same effect so we just put here icons. Oh, I can just reduce the icon size. Uh, that would be something. Mm, think fast, samples. Think fast. How do you want to go about it? Okay. Icons. Dot remove i. 
and for the on press for now let's leave it like that and this is what happens um, if I try to resize this icon does it make a lot of difference on our UI it doesn't it does not I'm trying to make sure that our design looks fine that's why we're trying we are on this trial process here to see if things will get any better because we can go ahead using it. okay you know what let's leave it the way it is doesn't matter it's not a big deal anyhow okay so we will leave it the way it is for the password and for the confirm password again we come over here then we will add a child a new widget which is going to be a list view list tile sorry list tile and instead of child we want the title and again just come over here and copy this blah 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 and here you paste it okay and um, it's okay But what's the use of this now? How can we make this work? Uh, come over here at the very top and we will create a, another variable, a bool called uh, hide pass. By default, it's going to be true. And when you come down here, the obscure text we will just paste hide pass and for the conf confirm password as well must be hide pass so what else when we click on this what I'm going to do is simply to set a state where height pass is going to be false we copy this and we copy this and we come over here just do the same thing okay uh, I guess that that's all now of course if we were to test this on the app as you can see we are we are typing the password and if I click on this for example here we are typing the password oh, yeah. let me let me learn this okay uh, we'll hit sign up here we come then we will start typing the password and if you can see now we are hiding the password and I just hit this and we display the password that's all now uh, let us actually go ahead and create our user on the database for now um, what is it what's supposed to happen when you press on this we will create another method called validate form and uh, the method doesn't exist so we will create that
Okay. Form. It's supposed to be form. Is equal to form. State is equal to form key dot current state. Okay. So uh, to validate our form, we will if what our form state validates couple things we, we will do here and um, first of all is we will reset the form okay th that's not important to reset the form because anyway we're going to be shifting um we have to create our user okay so the first thing i'm going to do is come back to the top and there are a couple things our firebase app is already here First, we'll do one thing. Uh, instance. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, current user. We will try to check if the user exists. Okay. And this is how we do this but because it's a synchronous we have to use a, a weight and this method here is going to be a synchronous as well okay when we validate we will check if this firebase user or with the firebase if there's someone logged in or something does exist and after this we will if user is equal to null meaning that the user does not exist we will do something um, which is firebase user dot create user maybe that's not the best thing to do but anyway await dot firebase out dot we want to create user with email and password that's what we want and here we will have first the email text controller dot text and afterwards we're going to have the password dot text Okay. Oh, uh, for base user. Mm. Or oh, better yet, let's not do it this way. Okay. Oops. Oops. Reformat this. So here we have. Um, the Firebase out create user with email and password email we're going to take from the email controller the password as well when this is done then this is going to return something and that's something that's going to be returned from this method is the user and when that user is returned we will want to do something
Okay, uh, let us create Let us create um, another package here. Oops, oops, not a dirt file. Uh, the package is going to be called uh, DB, for example. And inside of that package DB, we will create a new Dart file called users. Okay. And uh, for that class, class user services. Uh, we we will need to import a couple stuff here and um, of course we'll need the Firebase database <laughs> and we will just hit here and uh, Bloom, 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 bloom. Let's just go here and uh, Firebase out is not what we want. We need Firebase database. Um, okay. I wanted just to go and copy somewhere, but seems like I will have to write import package. Firebase, Firebase. Okay, I think that we don't have the Firebase database package here, do we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, we don't. So we don't have that dependency. So what we can do here is. Open Safari and Firebase database platter. Installing this is what we need. Copy and go back to our Android Studio and paste that and run a packages get <laughs> seems like we are having a problem here it depends on blah 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 Mm, saying that this version of the Firebase database is not compatible with the other ones, so just remove that and okay. When you do this, this will automatically find a version for you. So just remove the version when you get that kind of error, and the problem will be solved. Now, uh, let's go back to the users, and now we will do. Firebase database, that's what we want. So, in here, we will use Firebase database, and here it's going to be called database, which is equal to Firebase database. Oh, 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 oh. Instance. okay done and what else do we want we want string which is going to be our reference and that string will be equal to 
users done now we need a method create user and this will eventually take some parameters that we will define but for now in here we're going to have database dot reference dot child and for the child we are going to paste ref dot okay just delete this and database uh, firebase database reference child ref uh, here for this child ref is basically we're creating a new node and the name of the node is going to be called ref uh, users and if you're coming from SQL or another kind of relational database just imagine this as the table name okay done and here we're going to create a push because we want to push something into the database into that table and for the push we are going to set set takes a map so I will I will I will just leave value in here and I will make this to take a map value okay this is all that we have to do mm -hmm. Touch error e. can we use this like that so if we have an error we will want to oops 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 what's the problem bro uh, print we will want to print that error E dot to string not required so what we're doing here is uh, we're getting a reference to the database we're creating a table called users and we push a set of values that we're going to get okay and when we have the error we want to print that error that's all we're doing here uh, now, what else is here to be done? Just come over our sign up and we will want to have, we we'll want to import um, db and uh, users.dart and again user services is equal to, equal to user services which is equal to user services done we have this imported now let's go back down here let's go down 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 to our validate form so then what will we want to do in here is I'm saying create a user with a mail and password and then from that created user we want to do something oh, okay then what then in here we will do user services dot um, create user this is going to take a map that's why we need to define that map in here map and the name of the map is going to be value which is basically a set of data oops in here and we have an error 
mean expected to find undefined name value um, what would be your problem here okay maybe what you want is this but still we are having a couple of issues here so what I can do is instead of defining that variable there come and define it here and what I'm going to do here is basically just the value is going to be equal to and uh, in here we will define user name and the username is going to be equal to what to the we have a controller for this on um, name text controller dot text okay Bro. Let's cut this. It's giving us a couple of issues. And we will define our map in here. Create user. We have that the username is going to be equal to this. And what else do we want? The email is going to be equal to a Firebase user dot email. Where is that? Uh, email. Oops. The user ID again going to be equal to user dot uid and here again I can remove this but the username is going to be equal to user dot display name is better display name Okay, the name, uh, the email, and the user ID is somehow done. And uh, what else can we do here? Is the gender of the user We're going to be able to gender because we define this? And another thing that we want here is um, orders for now we can just give an empty map and um, wish list oh you know what we will not define this now We'll define this afterwards. Okay, this is all we, we want: username, email, user ID, and gender. Done. Uh, there's something else I would like to do here, which is we are going to give the user dot uid in this function as a parameter, and let's come to the user dot dart here instead of just taking a map we will want to take a string again called uid and here uh, what's the difference when i use a push it will automatically create an id for me uh, for the user but i don't want that i want that the id of that record inside of the table matches the id of 
my user that's why you're passing the id so i will do something like ref oops ref slash uid so by default i will have this uid as the id of the that table the record so basically we're saying table name users the id of that record is the same as the user id so what else is is there to be done this is solved and uh, once this is created we will do something which is um we have this user created and all and after this is done again we can do a catch oops catch error just in case and we will print error dot to string just in case we get some problems there and once all of this is done we will just go to the let's go back to the login and uh, broom 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 what I want is this we'll just do this go to the home page okay <laughs> delete this yes ladies and gentlemen we did write a lot of code here but uh, let us let us let us try to see if things are working or not so just hit run uh for now we only have the logic for the register screen so let's try something first let's try just hitting sign up and see what happens oh i forgot to do something when we hit sign up when we hit sign up where's 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 sign up on press validate form okay we have that we have that but for whatever reason our sign up seems not to be working let's put that on full screen One second. Um, we can do something like form state dot reset here after that is valid, just to make sure it will work perfectly fine. And um, here, because there is some mismatch here, 
this cannot be a void this is a future So we can do it future void. Okay. This is a future method. It can't be defined as a void. Done. And um, some other things we can do to input this is just come to our sign up here and our is going to be a synchronous uh, let us run the app okay give it a time Sometimes this takes a while. Oops. Oops. Mm. It's taking a lot of time, more than expected. So let me just stop the processing and I will run the app from zero. Okay. Let us take a time and then see what happened. Okay, 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 okay. Just let's do our final test to see if all of the code that we uh, and after that is done, this video will be over. I wanted to do a short video, but you know, it's not an easy task. I can tell. Yeah, but everything seems to be working fine or well written. So let's just hope it's working as expected. Okay. Uh let us go back to our login and if we hit sign up, now it's working. We have a bunch of errors here. The password cannot be empty, blah blah blah, all of these fields. And now let me try to fill this stuff up. And for my name, I'll write here. Uh, Santos. Santos. My email is going to be Santos. Enor. But SS. at gmail.com mail of course uh, let us create a good password now um, okay I'll just put here one two three four five six and here the same thing one two three four five six hit sign up Kaboomba! I'm logged into the app. But now that's not all. We need to make sure that um, what we need to do here, uh, just a second, is go to Firebase and make sure that our user was actually created. So I'll open my console. Just open wherever you configured. 
Boom, boom, boom. So let's go to the databases. And let's open our real time database. And ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Hmm. It does seem like we have a small, small issue here. And if you go to the users, okay, we have the authentication here done, correct. But uh, the problem now was here on our database. But anyways, uh, that cannot be a major issue. Uh, do we have any information here? Oh, okay, we have it here. And it says... No such file or directory for the Firebase authentication. Invalid argument Firebase user. Okay, I know why. I know why, and um, let me put this on full screen. And in here, the error was. Let's go to the value date here. Just add a. Uh, string okay and let us try to do this again sign up and now I will use a different I'll use different credentials okay Here's our sign up window. Uh, for the name, I'll write Santos again. For the email, I'll write Santos at test.com. Mail, of course. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sign up. And we are in. Let us see if we have any log or any error info in here. Uh, do we? Okay, let us go and check if our database did change. Let's go and check if our database did change. And it did not, and we're still having, and we're still having. Um, if we go back here to our authentication, we have the second user. Uh, okay, I'll 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 make sure I restructure this because it's probably a very very minor issue here. We can do this, trying to solve this without having to struggle much, because this video has been already too long. And let's go back to our first approach. Instead of that, just taking a map. Okay. And. Um, What else? What else? Here on our sign up, 
we can do some basic modifications because this might be why I'm having the error here. I take the name text controller dot text for the email again. I can take the name text controller dot no 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 no. I can use the email text controller dot text and for the user ID I'll just leave it like that. Um let me go ahead and create another account first to rerun the app. Is it done? Well hopefully so let's create another account I'll create a fake name John and for the email just j at test.com password one two three one two three I can hit display password so you can see that it's working one two three one two three the password match okay let's go to our database now and see if we solve the problem boom 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 and here we have it ladies and gentlemen don't mind this other fields are just things I created I don't know why don't mind this but uh, our table or our node is users and we were able to create this we have our first user pushed when I use push this ID is automatically created I didn't touch this now we have the email, the user ID, and the username. Okay, it's done. Um, the only issue here is that the, this is different. These two fields are different. So um, let let me try to fix this. Let me try to fix this by doing something like. Because that what's happen, what happens when you create uh, the user using a push. Now let's go to the user again. Put this on full screen. I don't want this to be automatically created. So I'll do something here. I'll create a string and I'll call it ID and I'll say that it's equal to value. Value what? user ID and then here I'll for the reference I'm going to create ref slash ID and we have this let's rerun the app and uh, see what happens So, I really, just a second, let me go to Firebase Authentication and delete all of these users. Delete account, delete account. delete account okay all of the users run the app again okay let's do a sign up of course for the username santosh email santosh at test.com 
mail password one two three one two three and here one two three one two three sign up and we had an issue uh, probably because the passwords do not match okay not a problem one two three one two three hit here one two three one two three and when I hit sign up for whatever reason <laughs> for whatever reason user ID user ID what could be the issue now because all of the problems seem to be solved then what's wrong with you okay because this was signed into another user um, the last test that we can do to make sure things will work I'll come and install the app I'm having that problem because uh, if you remember I already had logged in with one account and I'm trying to do a login again so things are not working perfectly let's run now and um, positive it's going to work Okay, this may take a while. This may take a while. And this video is longer than expected. But anyways, that's not a big deal. Um, probably I would have to then edit this video and cut these parts for you guys just wait but unfortunately I'm not going to do that <laughs> because the video actually is too long and I would have to take some time to make that happen but guys uh, I really hope you uh, did understand because this video was super long but nevertheless super super important and I believe you did learn a lot of new stuff here that you are going to be able to use on these or other projects you have and um, yeah that's it so now we're just waiting for the processing to finish and to be honest it's taking some time okay 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 it's done it's done sorry for making you wait um, sign up let us do our test Santos no let, let, let me do something okay blue 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 another name another name Mario M at test dot com password one two three one two three again one two three one two three again sign up and somehow we are having an issue here I can't understand why this is so hmm. Okay, okay, this is not fun, but there's a way around that. Let us just come here to our confirm password because you are giving us an issue. We don't know what's wrong with you, so what I will do is 
comment on you and focus on important things. Matter of fact, I just remove you because you're giving me problems. I'll see if the problem was that bug in particular for the whole app. Mario, Mario at test.com, mail, of course, password, one, two, three, one, two, three, sign up. Still, we are not signing up. Oh, damn. I believe I know what's the problem. Let us do a final test, and if it doesn't work, we will solve this issue on our next video, okay? On page, what I have to do is go ahead and import this, and let me we will do it directly to the home page and in here, and in here I just have to hit log out, done, sign up, uh, Jesse email gss at test.com is a female and the password is 123 123 done uh i needed to do a logout that that was the issue and we in let us go to our users our phone and if I refresh here, go to our database. Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. And still, we only have. Oh man. Okay, we will come and make this work work perfectly on the next video because this video was already too long. And actually it's working. I just have to fix I just have to fix something here and there. Okay guys, I uh, we will fix this issue on the next video, no problem. And um, it didn't I mean by the way we had our first our well, first and entry on the table we could just stop there this thing will work so see you on the next one bye bye don't forget to like and subscribe though